All right, I want to make sure we are live. Um, welcome, everybody. We are here with Cody Rourke from Locked On Broncos. We're going to break down the, frankly, phenomenal defensive performance um, that the Broncos had against the Cowboys the other night. And, and Cody, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about the team and whatnot, but the score was not indicative of the ass whooping. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, it was 30-0 to zero for most of it, and then Vic started playing really soft. They're up by 30. You don't want to do anything stupid. And they got a few, you know, cheap, you know, rack stuff and whatever, rack catch, you know, catch and run and all that. And then, um, you know, kind of, it may, like, if you didn't watch the game or you didn't know, you'd be like, oh, oh wow, the Broncos beat the Cowboys because Cowboys have been very good. Oh, they beat them by two scores. No. I mean, yes, yeah. Yeah, yes, they did. They did beat them by two scores, but, like, it was an ass whooping. So, anyway, so, Cody, introduce yourself, give you the uh, uh, the floor here, and then once you do that, I want to hear your thoughts on the state of the Broncos. I'm a Vic Fangio guy. Um, we did a lot of the stuff that he did in high school going back to the mid-2000s. It's just now catching on in the NFL. I mean, he's been doing it for a few years, but... It's just now catching on, and Brandon Staley has really kind of brought Vic forward in a lot of his concepts. Um, but tell me, tell first of all, introduce the audience, and you may have a bunch of people coming over, so they probably know who you are. But we're <laughs> mixing two worlds here. Uh, we're, it's like uh, Seinfeld when we're, you know the, the 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 worlds are colliding. So for those of you who don't know me, that follow Cody and are here, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Chris Vasser. People call me Coach Vass. I host the Make Defense Great Again show. Also, I'm rocking an early Christmas present, Latte Larry's. If you guys are fans of Seinfeld, um, I got this as an early Christmas present for my girl. And I'm wearing this tonight. Usually I got the Make Defense Great Again hat on. But uh, anyway, so I host a podcast. I do a bunch of stuff for Glazier, Huddle, and Coach Tube. Um, but Cody, introduce yourself. And then I want to hear what you think about the game overall before we get into the X's and O's. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. absolutely. I'm Cody, Cody Rourke. I cover the Denver Broncos, Broncos for the Lockdown, Lockdown Network and Nine News in Denver, Colorado. I also do some stuff for Pro Football Network. Uh, a lot of background, too, uh, sports management background, playing, coaching. Uh, more recently, just kind of took a, a step away from coaching so I could do sports media full time and uh, just love the game of football, the intricacies of it and everything like that. I, you know, I always think that football saved my life. So uh, I owe a lot to this game. But really just outside of that, th this game was a, a big surprise, I think, for many Broncos fans because coming into it, you look at Dak Prescott returning, you look at them having the offensive talent, you know, with Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard out of the backfield, the offensive line that they have, and then you have Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb. I know Michael Gallup didn't play in this game, but you still have Cedric Wilson. So you have more than capable guys and then Dalton Schultz at tight end. Uh, they just present a lot of uh, different mismatch opportunities for you because they're one of the most explosive offenses in the league, at least coming into this game uh, when we talk about in terms of total yardage that they were first in the NFL, total points per game, third in the NFL in this matchup. But they were going against a sixth-ranked Broncos defense and the second uh, scoring defense in the NFL in Denver. So when you look at those numbers and those metrics, it makes sense that maybe, hey, this was going to be an interesting matchup from the beginning. But if you look at how the Broncos have played since their 3-0 and start, everyone thought, okay, hey, I don't think that Denver is going to have a chance in this one. Uh, so for Denver to come out the way that they did, and I love that you said make defense great again. It's fantastic. I might get that tattooed one day. But they they brought it on their first defensive drive, and I think that was probably something that was a tone setter for them the rest of the game. Absolutely. I watched the game, and you mentioned the word tone setter, and I'll get into it in a second. I have to play all the, uh, I, I need, I need to hire like a team or so. I don't know. Like I'm like trying to put the links on Twitter and I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> totally listening to you reacting, trying to like tweet out the links to the show, make sure my remote's still working. But you said tone setter and the first fourth down, I think it was fourth and one or third and one. I'll have to pull up the film. The Cowboys, the analytics told them to go for it. And yep. yep. The Broncos shoved it right up their ass. And I know the first take when watching the game is, wow, Dak was awful. And you'll see some stuff that he missed, but you can't throw to a receiver that's not separated. You can't, uh, 
you know, you, you can't throw the ball if you're on your back. And they really, the, the, the story of the game is they got their shit pushed in up front. And Fangio did a really good job. He played a lot of cover one. And I think, and, and honestly, I have a lot of respect for Kellen Moore. Uh, Kellen Moore was the quarterback at Boise State when I was at San Jose State. We were actually the closest team, maybe besides Oklahoma, we were the closest team to them. We had them in the fourth quarter when I was working for the team. And they pulled out a win at Spartan Stadium in San Jose. So I've always, I mean, I've been rooting for him just because it was cool to see a guy that you, you coached. I don't know if you call coach. I was on the staff, but it wasn't like I was calling the defense or whatever. I was just a gopher at the time, an errand boy. But uh, a guy that you <laughs> see play in college, then all of a sudden get to that level. But I thought he called it absolutely horrible game. Um, and you'll see when we get into the, the nuts and bolts of it, uh, what I mean by that, uh, a lot of curls come, uh, uh, not even comebacks, like a lot of curls, a lot of hitches, and the Broncos came out of the gate playing cover one, and th- I don't think he helped them. So yeah, d- you know, Dak <laughs> missed, and you'll see a couple throws. There's there's a play action snap. You'll see they're, they're playing three deep. The backers come up. The safeties back pedal on the stadium, and you'll see uh, there's a huge hole. I mean, twenty yards of vertical space in there to get it in there and he's looking right at it and he doesn't throw it and he looks a little not spooked because i think that word gets overused but hesitant um but you know with with uh his performance and everything and i mean i just i don't think they did a great job and and when they they broke the broncos coverage a few times you know there was a route where they cleared everybody out, sent one underneath, and that number one receiver was a backup running back. And he may have great hands, but if you're designing a play to beat coverage and empty, and your focus is, you know, that one route, because you're really, and you'll see the play, don't make the focus of the play your backup running back. So, yeah. yeah. And maybe that's me being too harsh on Tony Pollard, but it hits him in a bad spot, as we used to say to our kids, right in the hands. So, and if that happens, you know, you got to do that. So, yeah, I was actually interested because, you know, with Chubb being out and them trading Vaughn, I, I, I thought it could be ripe for like just a letdown. The team going, we traded our best defensive, and maybe he's not been performing the best. I don't have the PFF grades, or do I give a shit? <laughs> but like, it's Vaughn Miller. So, I don't want some fucking stat nerd coming in here, be like, actually, we looked at, uh, the EPA of the DVOA and he's actually the sixth best player. I don't give a shit. It's, it's Von Miller and you just traded him. Even if it's emotional, he, he, he's, you know, he's mad about some Halloween party or some shit. Nobody cares, but you you trade him away. And that's a very much like rebuild mode move for a guy that's like on the hot seat. And so I saw the score and I was like, Holy, when it was 30 zero, I was like, Holy shit. So I was really proud is not the right word because I'm not a fan necessarily, but like I was impressed that they were like they came to play. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean it was a, it was it was a big statement, statement win for them too defensively. Nobody, nobody I, I, I think a lot, a lot of people had felt initially that okay, hey, getting rid of Von Miller means you're giving, giving up, up on the season of four and four. But George Payton had said, uh, you know, we, 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 we believe that we can still win games. He said that on Tuesday after they traded him. So, you know, the NFL has been so weird this year, coach. I that's the thing that kind of frustrates me is that we have this one display one week, right? And then the next week we see this team. I mean, we can use the Buffalo Bills, Jaguars as an example. Nobody expected the Jaguars to beat the Bills, let alone hold them to nine, they have six total points. That was another, another surprise. So, so the, the NFL, NFL has been, been so weird this season. season. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's crazy. And, you know, I have some friends that are, they don't really love, oh, are we getting an echo? Don't tell me we're getting echo already. I don't, I don't hear, hear anything, anything on my end. end. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Hopefully. Yeah, I think there may be an echo. We're trying to figure out. So what's happening is here, and if you guys know, I'm using my third platform. Okay. In three weeks, we're trying, I'm trying to get the best film. I'm trying to get, the problem is Cody's audio comes through my, my Scarlet channel. Shit. Yeah. There's a huge echo. Fuck. Yeah. yeah I've, I've got, got the, the Scarlet, Scarlet too on my end. end. I, wonder I wonder if it's, if it's an, an output, output thing. thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. This just sucks. Technology. Technology. 
Let me try. There's always one thing, thing we, we can, can count, count on. Let me try something here. Go ahead and talk for me. Nah, that mutes him. So here's what's going to have to happen. I'm just going to have to mute myself when you talk. So That's let, fine. Let, let's do a test real quick, chat. Thank you for bringing this up. I'm on my third program. I'm trying to get, do the best I can. I, I've paid a bunch of money for just trying to get the best broadcast I can. This is not my background. This is my background. Uh, so let me try this. Go ahead and talk for me, Cody. Yeah. Check, check, check. Was there an echo just there? We'll have to see. Let's see, chat. So I muted myself when Cody started talking, so I think that might help. The audience is always the best, the best measure for that. There we go. We'll see if they can hear it, if there's an echo now. Okay, boom. It's good. Okay, so I'm just going to have to, when you start to talk, I'm just going to have to kill the audio, and then we'll fix it for next week. I apologize, guys. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, it's It's always a shit... Yeah, so Kaz, what's happening is I'm picking up, for some reason, my audio output. My I have a Scarlet interface. It's picking up the system audio, and it did this on OBS last week, which is the problem that we had. Um, it would pick up anything coming in as instead of just my microphone, which I don't understand why that's a thing, but it is a thing. Unfortunately, when I try to mute Cody, it mutes him altogether. So I'm just going to have to play DJ tonight. And when I'm watching, hopefully when we get the film going, when I watch the film, I'm, when, when Cody goes to talk, just hit the mute button and we'll figure it out for next week. So appreciate you going with me um, and, and, and let me know this stuff because, you know, sometimes, again, this is it's not my specialty. I had, to, I had to pay somebody to sit there and help me set all this up today for the third new system. But I, I'm freaking, I am going to figure this out. I will not be beat by the nerds. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I just got my finger on the mute button. I have my clicker. I'm ready to go. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, let's get into it. Actually, I got, I got a soundboard on this God forsaken thing. And I am so, I am ready to have some fun. So on the podcast, uh, when I go from doing the intro to the interview, I play a little guitar ditty from a record I made back when I was like 20. And then I have, if you've ever seen the um, the Marshawn Lynch video, the guy that did the commentary, the, uh, you know, the uh, Darren Sharper, hold my dick. Yeah. So I have, I have a clip of him going, let's get into it, man. Because that's what he says when he, when he breaks it down. Let's get into it, man. So now I have a soundboard. I could pop that in whenever. All right, I let's try it. that again. Here we go. All right, let's get into the film. Let's, let's get, get into it, it man. That's, that's fucking awesome. All right. Let's see if this works. All right, we got the film up. So I'm actually going to do something a little different today. Oh, don't you start with me, Huddle. You mother. Don't you dare. What is going on here? Okay, so I'm going to start with something different here. I'm actually going to show a short yardage play to start the game off. Okay. So it is fourth and one, fourth play of the game. So this is the first drive. And what makes this more impressive, and I know there's stats. Oh, home field advantage doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter there. But I, I'm sorry. I've been on college football staff where we had to travel to play. Um, and yes, I will explain the fire zone stuff. I'm reading the chat. Um, I have had to travel by air, by bus, uh, flying to Hawaii. I don't give a shit what the stats say. When you play on the road, it is tougher than playing at home. Now, maybe that doesn't, you know, go on the in the stats, or maybe I'm wrong. But I tell you, if I if I had a choice, I'd rather play at home. So, what's more impressive is, and I know it was Dag's first game back. He'd been hurt, but they did this at Jerry World. So. This, to me, was the tone setter for the game. The Cowboys run stretch into a pile of just bodies. And they stop him. Now let's watch the end zone. So they're running what Fangio calls tough, which is two Gs, two fours, or four Is. And these are just generic positions. These are not their actual, actual position. Two guys here. 
and then the safeties are keying in. It's cover zero. And you can see them pressing. It's hard to get those doubles. It's hard to reach. With the guy up on the line, it's all single blocks. And all somebody has to do is one person has to win the one-on-ones. It makes the ball cut back. The player covering the tight end sees the tight end is cutting off. Now, this is where you have to be careful because you can get delay routes and whatnot. Shoots the gap. Tackles legs. Broncos get the ball back. And that was that was the first series. And right then and there when I was watching the game, I was like, oh, shit. Here <laughs> we go. All right. So we're going to get in. We're going to start off with our cover one calls from the game. So Sertan is going to stay here on the tight end. So what's going to happen usually is, and we've talked about this on other shows, they're playing cover one. They call it lurk. Uh, most people call it just one rat, one robber, whatever. Everybody has their own names. Everybody has their own technique names. There's nothing universal. So a lot of people are like, what's this mean? What's that mean? Uh, no, it's not what he calls a 6-1 front. That is just a goal line front, uh, goal line short yardage front. His 6 front, they call it 40, 40 quads. All right, that quads the coverage. So they're playing man here, man here, man here, man here. The backers are reading the back. Okay, so this is what Fangio calls lurk. A lot of people that use the term lurk, it means the safety's coming down. He calls that one hole. I call it one cross. I mean, there's a lot of terminology, but basically when you're playing cover one in the NFL, the two most common ways to do it is either a linebacker is going to be a rat and a DB is going to come down and cover, or you're going to play some sort of dime concept. Unless it's 11 personnel, you could just match a backer on a tight end. And then you're going to man up underneath like this here. And then the safety would be back here and he would come down and he would go back. Now, what's interesting is Fangio, and I don't know what they call the weak side thing, so I'm going to call it one cross. It doesn't really matter. He calls one hole when the safety to the trips by rule comes down. The backside safety goes back. Okay. And then one cross to me is two by two. The guy away from the back drops down to take the crosser because that's where usually the shallow goes to. And that is a big uh, staple of the Cowboys offense. I don't Some analytics guy saying deck struggle with the safety spinning down post snap. I mean, that's that's pretty much a, a standard thing. I don't. I, that's why I don't understand why the NFL hasn't done it more. But you can see Sertan, and we've talked about this before. If you've watched the show, usually when you have an extra guy, the rat here would be here. What you would want to do is the man covering the crosser would use use a code word, cut or rat. Cut, 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 rat, rat, rat. So the rat would take the crosser, and then Sertan would go find the next route depending on the formation. Now... This is three by one nub. So this is a 12 personnel look. So I don't know by, and, and that's all by game plan and without being in the rooms. I mean, there's a lot of shit I can figure out. Uh, there's a lot of shit I can figure out without actually being in those meeting rooms. And so um, I don't, I can't tell you. There's certain formations I can guess better than others. I don't know on this one. So the, the, the rat in high school, the rat, you're like five to 10 look for work and this in the NFL and even at high college levels, maybe even at lower college levels, when they're going, they're not dropping to a spot. They're looking for routes. So out of this formation, I don't know what they would usually call, but if it was like, say it was two by two and this guy didn't exist. If this guy ran the shallow, I'm presuming he's looking for the dig from the other side. It also depends on the depth of the route. If it's a five yard cross and it's mesh, then depending on what they do, um, they may look like they run mesh pyramid where they bring a guy and sit over the ball. They'll cut that or they'll look for the dig from the other side. It'll be a deeper, uh, well, actually it'll be about the same level. Okay. You see Sertan stays on this. The rat plays, the rat right here plays just basically a country rat. He's just dropping, looking at eyes. Sertan, he gets a little piece of the tight end. But the theme for this game is the Cowboys could not get separation and Moore kept calling plays I and mean, he called some crossing routes, but he kept calling plays that were a problem 
because they were playing man coverage, which somebody said on Twitter, I forgot it was, it might have been Brett Coleman said, well, I thought, you know, it's standard logic that you're going to get your ass kicked and cover one against the Cowboys. I don't know that to be the case. I haven't watched enough of them. But, I mean, there's no nobody separated. So you can blame Dak all you want, but, I mean, who's, who's he going to throw to there? And, and talk to me about this, Cody. When I was doing the game, or when I when I was doing this and starting out this process, I was looking at the roster. I saw a lot of guys I hadn't heard of on the front end, the front <laughs> six, rookies. Uh, you know, Chubb is out. They traded Miller. Uh, their nose tackles out. There's a lot of young guys on this defense. There was like two or three rookies in the starting front. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah that, that was. was. So, so if you, you look on the right hand side, side there, there's Stephen Weatherly, one of the additions there that the Broncos had traded for from Minnesota. He's number 91. The left, left outside linebacker. This could be Jonathan, Jonathan Cooper, seventh round pick out of Ohio State. State. But even you make, make a great point too. The two, two inside backers. These are new guys into the Broncos starting lineup. They, they played last week against Washington Football Team, but this is their second, their real first week truly starting. So you have Baron Browning. Third round, round pick out of Ohio State. State. You, you have Ken Young, Young, who George, George Payton, Payton had traded for as well. Very versatile type of guys. So, so on this one as well, we saw Baron Browning playing a lot of this lurk, a lot of this whole coverage in this, this game, trying to take away those crossing patterns by the Cowboys. And I think that his speed and his range is actually something that gave the Broncos an advantage that they haven't had so far this season, specifically at inside linebacker. Defensive line right now, it looks like you've got Deshaun Williams in alongside him. I'm trying to think of the – other defensive uh, defensive tackle is there. Um, yep, that might be Shamar. Yep, Shamar Stephan and uh, Deshaun Williams. So, uh, yeah, young guys. Got not a lot of household names that you know here, and they're creating a little bit of that pressure in that pocket there for Dak, and then the cover just holds up on the back end. What's interesting to me is, I mean, this is the fifth play of the game. Was it still echoing? I muted myself. I don't know what to do if that's the case. I wonder if it's the system audio that's picking it up. Go ahead and say something for me real quick. Yeah. Yeah. See, See, I I even heard it for a second there. Yeah, the system audio is picking up. I had to mute the system. I don't know why that's pulling it in. This is a whole nightmare. Sorry, guys. (laughs) Um, All right, so here's what was interesting about this play. It told me a lot, and I'm spitballing here. They're in 12th personnel. It's the first play of the second series. So this is a script, okay? They're in 12th personnel, and they're running mesh or crossers with two tight ends. So what I'm thinking is they're expecting them to be in base personnel because putting slower people in the game to run crossing routes, when you clearly have faster people that are not in the game, to me, is not a winning business model. I don't know why you would do that. So that was what was interesting to me personally all right here we go next play here's another snap a one will lurk this is two plays later they can't get separation okay i think somebody was off sides but i just wanted to show so i think this is a free play but i mean where is he going to throw the ball so again and i'm not a dac apologist for those of you who are joining for the first time, I am NFL agnostic. I don't give a shit. I grew up a Dolphins fan. I'm fans of. I'm a fan of coaches, but I don't have any emotional investment. So if you're in here being like, oh, he's apologizing for Jack, or he's a closet Cowboy fan, I literally couldn't give less of a shit. And I'm, I mean that in the nicest way possible. But, I mean, where's he going <laughs> to throw the ball here? I mean, look at this free no spray. Yeah, there's nobody open. Where's he going to throw the ball? The only argument I think maybe you could make is they try to get that pick there, I think, with the number two receiver. They try to get it, but even then, the linebacker's getting depth. It's like, okay, there's no one there. The safety's there to pick up number number three coming up vertically underneath the pick route. There's there's nothing there. Exactly. The guy's getting j- – he got a tight end in there, getting his ass jammed. And clogging the whole play up, and then they're covering the shit out of the outside receivers. I mean, I, I don't know what you wanted to do there. That's, That's a great, great job, job by Darby, Darby getting in face, too, staying in front of him while squeezing the hip. Too many people don't squeeze the hip these days. Yeah, it's a long start. Here's the next play. So they're in cover one. So they've been in cover one almost every snap. Okay. They run a fake, they run a play action fake. 
They're going to run the deep over routes and then they're going to throw a screen underneath. And this is what's insane to me is not only, and I know you have a script and you want to stay on your script and you're thinking, okay, maybe they're going to get off of it. They're starting out in one. So we go to a different game plan and they sneak back in their other stuff. But you have two guys keying one guy and you play action to him. Now I'm no offensive guru. I'm not. And maybe they're counting on the fact that when they play action here and they see he doesn't have the ball, they're going to turn and run and get out of there. Maybe on film, they saw him turn and run and look for crossers or whatever. And then you throw it to him. But I've never understood faking it to a guy and then throwing it to him. Unless you see a team that they're taking their backers and they're just bailing the hell out of the stadium. I don't understand this. I mean, do they have a history of doing something like that? Do you know? Uh, you know, with Denver, they they tend to be really aggressive sometimes. What, what was the down of distance on that? Was that first down? First and 10. Okay. Okay. Third so, series, first, first play of the third series. Yeah, so they do have a tendency. Denver's been Denver's been a little bit bitten in the last couple, you know few weeks by screen plays because they're over aggressive and guys are getting too far upfield, and so they're trying to hit it. But looks like you're trying to do a little too much there. But look, the defensive line does a great job staying home. Linebackers they don't bite on it at all. <laughs> they're reading that guard. They're reading what the guard's doing here, setting up. They're not getting depth to the second level here because they obviously can't. One one thousand one. Bam! Release. Dump, dump off, off the, the screen. screen. That's just great job staying home. Well, and, and this guy right here is covering him. That he's supposed to cover him. <laughs> so what the fuck are you doing? Sorry, what the hell are you doing? I mean, I don't understand these play designs. That's, That's why, why Vic is fantastic as a defensive coordinator. I mean, you mentioned it too before we went on the show. Brandon Staley obviously runs it. But then you had the guys in the Green Bay Packers organization that wanted to run a Vic Fangio style of defense this offseason coming into it. Um just the concepts are, are what helps against the modern NFL today. Yeah, it's wild, man. But you'll see here's a couple plays later. Here's a shallow. They bust it. They get him the ball in space. So now they have an actual um, you know, receiver, Amari Cooper, running the same route as before. Sertan gets caught in the wash. The rat's not Man, in a great tough. position. He gets out leveraged, and there you go. 32-yard gain. That's, That's how, how you attack, attack a cover, cover one, one, though. You have to try to get a guy free in that space, and there's a lot of traffic, too, in the middle of the field, which, you know, if you've ever played corner, especially in the NFL, playing against some of the speed that is out there, it is so difficult to have to track from one side of the field all the way across the other, going underneath crossing patterns, vertical routes that impede your progress. But I also think that's why maybe the Broncos are starting to drop a little bit more uh, of this alert coverage with their linebackers. They haven't been doing too much of that this year. So this was actually, I think, the first game where we saw it come in a lot with the linebacker position. But what they do with Kareem Jackson and Justin Simmons at the safety position, I mean, it's constant uh, in terms of them coming out in that too high look and them rolling guys down uh, based on coverages, replacing obviously in the middle of the field. But what, one thing that also kind of rings true is that pressure is, you know, it's not like Dak has all the time in the world to throw. The, the Broncos are doing a pretty good job of creating a little bit of pressure. It's just tough, especially when you're on man coverage all game. And Ed Donatel had said coming into this game, we're going to have to win some of our one-on-one -on -one matchups this week because we have to be aggressive. We can't allow uh, him to just sit back there and dice us apart. So, I think they won all of the matchups. Now, <laughs> what's interesting about this, what's smart, is they bring Pollard up through the line. So they get him moving this way to run the crosser. Now, in the chat, Christian Brown says, play action in the back versus aggressive D-line brings the linebackers closer to the releasing alignment, makes for quick shielding blocks, increases versus asking a line to chase linebackers, which I understand that. But and maybe I just have a small sample size, but I mean I've never I've ne teams did that to us and it literally never worked. If your guys are adding, so our so I don't know how they're being taught, but we taught our guys pop your feet. If you see it's passed, pop your feet, and then once he goes the block, go right now. And especially when you're play action faking, you know you're bringing this guy, and I get it, but if this guy fits where in here. They have three to block four. So I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Kellen's, Kellen Moore's making a lot more money than me and had shit figured out, but I just thought it was interesting. All right, so a couple plays later, here's one lurk again, and you can see uh, the game within the game here. So now they've got tight bunches. They motion back out over here. So now what you're going to see is they fix this a little bit. 
They get the tight end on the crosser. The backer does a fantastic job working. He's getting the call. Sertan's pointing. He's getting the call. So instead of turning, he basically just, it's almost like a zone drop, and he picks it up. And then you'll see Sertan work to the middle of the, f- the field, and they call it, uh, a lot of people call it Mesh Pyramid or the Chip Kelly um, Mesh. Now, again, this is where, I mean, who's this on? Is this on Dak? Is this on the receiver? I don't know, but it's thrown slightly behind him. The ball's out on time. You know, one guy gets beaten. And on that stuff, that's all you have to do. I mean, we played teams that were better than us, and we would get an empty and all this wide stuff, and all you had to do was win one matchup. But here's the end zone. He's looking for the mesh. Does this get tipped, actually? It kind, it kind of looked, looked like, like it, it did. Okay. okay, so that was the D line. I can't. A lot of this stuff is hard to see. And no, no, Christian, I know in the chat. I I know that's not what you're saying. I've heard O line coach. I've heard offensive coaches say that before, and I'm just like, I just agree with them. So they like do it c- continuously. All right. <laughs> so here's a few plays. A few series later, we get shallow again versus one lurk. They're motioning back. Okay. So let's let's get through this. So. I think this is just good pass rush. I mean, winning one-on-ones, it clogs the lanes. They win on the edge. Let's watch the coverage first. I mean, they've got, I mean, look, look right there. I mean, I know he's about to get sacked, but where are you going to throw this ball right now? I guess the snap out, but that's a, or an out and up, but I mean, well, so they had an out and up on, so he doesn't have time to throw that. So I'm sorry. No, I mean, you can, where are you going to go with the ball? Over here, he's he's not he's one of the last reads. You're reading shallow, dig to the swing. You have an alert somewhere out here, and, and they've covered everything. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah the, the windows, windows the windows, windows aren't, aren't there. there. I mean, it's it's, it, it's, it's locked, locked down, down right there. there. And I think too, too with Sertan on that out, out and up, up did a great job reading, reading that and adjusting, adjusting quickly, quickly with his hips. Well, well, watch here too because Amari Cooper. He motions, he motions out, out obviously. So, so now, now Justin, Justin Simmons, Simmons is going to actually replace because I believe pre-snap Sertan's over the tight end, which is Schultz. And now, and now that there's motion, he's, he's going to bump out. out. Obviously, Simmons, Simmons is going to come down and replace. Bam. That, that, that's, that's good. good. I, mean, I mean, when you have, when you the, have the personnel and athletes, athletes to do it, that's, that's just great execution by the defense. Yeah. I mean, there's there's nowhere to go with the ball. I mean, think about this. They've run... You know, they've run what this they've run shallow in the first. Okay, it's 26th play. So in the first 26 plays, they've run the same concept against the same coverage four times. Baron Baron Browning Browning right here getting his eyes across too. too. Love Love that. that. He He sees sees it already. already. Here's another snap of one lurk. Again, if you're just joining in, this is regular one rat cover one. This is just what Fangio call, calls it. They mug the linebacker up to try to get some protection turn. It works. They keep the tight end in to chip, you know, that old pesky seventh round guy. Um, <laughs> still, still nowhere to go. go. Actually, this is not this is not one lurk. This is one. I'm sorry. This is what we call one hole. I'm actually jumping ahead. I screwed this up. We'll come back to this play. Uh, I put this one. I I, tag, I tagged it wrong. We'll go back to this. I was wondering. I was like, I know there's one few more snaps than I had. All right. So here's some run plays. Stretch. Now, one of the things, the, one of the reasons I think that they played nickel and they played um, cover one, and you don't see it so much in this play. You'll see it when you get like tight end wing. Is it brings uh, closer people closer to the ball to try to help them on duo. So here is, you know, you mentioned the Broncos are very aggressive at fitting gaps, which a lot of people think, well, that's not great. You don't want to do that. I know there's a there's a real big push to not do that anymore. That you want to stack track fall back and all this stuff, but you know. Those backers are fitting fast, and you can see it here. You're getting stretch weak. 
The Mike's just going to take the A-gap. Right there, he beats the guard. Yep. It has to cut back. And you have bodies here. Now, what I'd like to have seen is, you know, it's cover one. I would have liked to have seen it again. I I'm critiquing an all – I mean, Justin Simmons is an all-pro player, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, go down there and get in there no. now. Don't allow because he, he did, did that on that. He did that on that fourth and one play. He did the same exact thing. He filled. It. He shot the gap. Got to do, do it there. there. Exactly. But great play by forty one. The forty one. Yeah, yep. Kenny, Kenny Young. Young. Brand new guy in Denver too. This is his second week in Denver, and he's already having this impact. So that's the benefit of pressing gaps when you're getting stretch and zone. Okay. Here's the problem. When you do run duo, <laughs> this can be a problem. Uh, so now we've got 12 personnel. You're forming a bunch. Now here's the thing with duo though, to run duo, you have to have some sort of presence inside here to, um, to clog things up and make the ball cut out. But here's the problem when you press gaps. It, it's the same thing versus power. Let's go to the end zone. How's the film? How's the stream looking for everybody so far? Smooth besides the audio uh, issue. We got the, we got the, uh, the video smooth. All right, watch this. So I try the same shit. And then all of a sudden, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> You're able to collect this guy filling in, dig him out of there, and then there it is. That's all, all Zeke needs, needs is a space like that. Now here's Duo getting bodies there. So it's a very similar look. Let's go to the end zone. So this is, I think, five plays later. I don't know if it's in the same series or not. I don't have that information popped up, but you're seeing the same thing. Now you can see 23 is getting closer in there, and all you're trying to do is just they're trying to clog body. It's power. It's no-pull power. It's basically like I look at it, and I know it's not exactly what a lot of people say. Oh, that, that's not right, whatever. But to me, it's it's – power it's it's counter it's it's no pull power but with counter so power to me would be they're down blocking and you're running this way but this you're it, you're running counter footwork or wind back or whatever the hell i you know i study offensive plays from the defensive side but look by having these bodies you're bringing people to the party 53 here wins a one-on-one -on -one block fantastic job makes the play who's 53 help me out here that's, that's jonathan cooper seventh round pick out of ohio state how he went seventh round is insane yeah it's insane i mean uh, you're looking at this and, and, you're, and you're sitting there and von miller must be watching this going, going game going damn like everybody was sad i mean i was i'm not even a broncos fan and i was sad for the broncos to lose him and then I'm watching this, and I'm not, okay, before anybody's like, I can't believe you compare the two. I'm not saying, I'm just saying the guy had a really freaking phenomenal game and stepped up to the plate in his first game. And I don't know if he was the direct replacement for Vaughn. I don't know. I'm just saying, I thought the Cowboys were going to shove it up their ass, to be honest with you. And then I saw this, and I was like, holy shit. Well, and he's, uh, I, I saw something today. He's actually tied right now with Miles Garrett for most quarterback pressures right now with, with 13. 13. And he's, he's only, only been playing limited action this season. That's insane. All right, here's a wind. So this is allegedly the wind back play that was put in to stop the tilt front, the 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 six one look that Belichick came up with. This was like the play that was invented or whatever for it. Allegedly, somebody told me that. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But you're gonna see it's it's it looks like zone. It looks like it looks like zone peel, but or zone slice, but it's it's a it's a designed cutback off of this. Again, I'm not studying offense like that. I mean, I know offense from a defensive perspective, but who put in where, what, I, I don't know that stuff, but this is just so pretty. 
Oh, I like, I like what, Jonathan what Jonathan Cooper does too. He squeezes down the edge of the line of scrimmage and he still has an angle to be able to take an outside step. And then you have obviously your flow from Kareem Jackson. And who's the other guy out there? Fuller's on the left side. So that might be, is that Caden Stearns or is that just a linebacker? We'll have to see. I, okay. I'm no NFL expert and no one flame you. Like, I don't, I, I will ban you from this, whatever, but do the Broncos have the best secondary in the league? I mean, I mean, I, I can't. I, again, I, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. I mean, maybe, maybe the Rams. I don't know, but I'm thinking you've got Sertan, Fuller, Darby, Simmons, and Kareem Jackson. Kareem the Dream. I mean, holy they shit! They have the potential. I mean, who, who's better? I don't know. I, I don't know this. I'm, I'm not. So nobody, you know, yell at me. But this um, is amazing. No, I mean, I could tell you Patrick Sertan's probably been the best DB this year. He and Bryce Callahan. Unfortunately, Bryce is on IR. He had a hyperextension. He's got an LCL injury, so he's going to be out six to eight weeks, potentially longer. So that's why Fuller, who actually got benched from the outside corner, is playing the nickel right now in this game. Um, that's just great pursuit there. And yeah, Darby coming up and getting involved. And that's one thing, too, Vic Fangio wants his cornerbacks to do. He wants them to be able to come up and tackle. They have to be able to be involved in the run component of the game and Darby's a guy that comes up and tackles. I mean, every DB does Sertan. He's kind of struggled in that department with consistency, but he's improving on it too. So uh, his coverage is there. His tackling stuff is going to get even better as he, you know, gets a little bit more experience. Here's one of the advantages. This is actually tag wrong. This is cover nine, which was what they call three week. They call it nine. So some coaches, some OCs, if it's too high, they'll, uh, They'll they'll stalk or they'll push crack and then if it's certain looks they'll they'll crack the guys here. Well, no, this is a bad example because he comes down, he sees it. I was going to say, you can trick them into blocking certain people if you insert late, but not really. I mean, it's he's down there, it's a fast fit, but because he goes to crack, you get the crack replace. And yeah, I mean, if you're going to play a lot of one high, in positions where especially in the league now where everybody's running compressed stuff. You got to be in a position where you can, you can crack or play some play edges. And that's one of the things, you know, I know that duo wants to, wants to do and is to get bodies in certain situations where you got to get a corner tackling a guy like Zeke cheat nine, baby. That's exactly right. Cheat nine. How'd you know that Jake? How'd you know it's called cheat? All right. So here's actually, this is mistagged by yours truly. This is what Fangio calls one hole. So people call it one cross. Well, this wouldn't be one hole uh, because, to, well, no, no, I'm sorry. This this would not be one cross. One hole they're calling the guy to the trips is down. He didn't have a tag that I knew of for one cross. So I think it's been a um, added thing lately. But for the one cross is an old concept. goes back many years. Again, real quick, if it's two by two, the safety away from the back comes down because he's going to he's going to end up taking the shallow, uh, which is a, you know, we've how many times have we seen shallow in the first 26 or drive? People, some people call drive. Mm-hmm. And then if it's three by one, you want to come away, especially if they're compressed like this. You want to play this. And that's the number one coverage in the NFL I've seen this year. Not number one, but like the, it's gone up. The use of it's gone up. I talked to a. Um, a quarterback coach for a, for a top team in the NFL, and he's like, yeah, that's all we see now. So what's going to happen is you have to play this at a dime. So a lot of this, oh, you can't see the tags, but like the defensive personnel is three, two, six. A lot of that shit semantics. It's you know what are you calling a linebacker? You know if you're play if you're a four down team, it's cleaner. It's four two four one four three. But you know when you're breaking a team down like the Broncos, who are you calling a lineman? Who are you calling a backer? So all that shit doesn't really matter. But you have to cover man underneath. So unless you got a tight end who's slow as shit, you can put a backer on him. But again, the one backer is going to take the back. This guy is going to take your crossers, and he's going to be in the middle of the field. And then you'll see it switched where he'll be in the middle of the field, and he'll come down and take the crossers. So watch, watch the first snap. I mean, there's no, mm. there's nowhere to throw the ball. I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean he, he can. can he can, he can risk, risk throwing, throwing that out route there, but DB might jump that, especially if it's not well placed. I mean, even right there, he it's covered. It, it's risky to throw. You might as well just be better suited to throw it away here. 
I just don't know. I mean, like, I'm watching this, and because, you know, you see all the instant reactions on Twitter, and you're like, I went expecting to be some insanely bad performance, and I'm just like, well, where does he throw it? Ah, great, great coverage. coverage. I mean, yeah. And, and awesome. Quick shout-out to Cody, too. I think this is the first guy I've had on that's also a coach. So Cody was a DB coach. I think you mentioned that earlier. I can't remember if you mentioned it when we went live. So it's kind of fun to have somebody in here that uh, you can talk with that actually has coached the game. And I don't mean that as anything negative to the other guys I've had on. But that's why uh, Cody's talking way more about scheme. He, he, he knows it. And so it's fun to have somebody else in here. All right. So here is one hole, one cross. You got a, a passing the crosser off. You have all the compressed stuff. So now they're bringing the guy down from the trip side. He's going to help cut the crosser. Now they let this guy go, which is not great because the guy covering number two is peaking, which you never really want. Now this concept was good for them because it matches up with one. It's good against one. It's good versus the quarter, quarter, half stuff, which you'll see us talk about here in a little bit. But you press. Interesting and, enough, this, this is, is out, out of their, their dime, dime package too, which they've got young guys in. They've got a rookie and Caden Stearns in there, and then as you saw a little bit earlier, they also have Nate Hairston, uh, who's another young guy. Man, here's the one criticism I have of Fangio. Okay. The one criticism I have of the Fangio's daily system is it's personnel dependent. So do you like that, by the way, that little, that little cut I made back to the camera, I, I'm, you know, I, you know, I'm going to be Tarantino soon, but, um, the one thing that I don't like about what they do is they're so personnel dependent. So when they're in this grouping, they're going to run this when they're in their dime stuff. It's almost always man when they're in their penny stuff and they don't do it a lot. It's daily does it. This is more daily criticism. But when he's in that penny stuff where you're playing bear with cover four, that's all they really do out of it. Now, they have a fire zone here. They'll play three deep here. But you can really tell who's on the field, by, or, or rather, what they're going to do by who's on the field. And I wish that he did more of the quarter stuff and the quarter, quarter, half stuff out of dime. Now, he might have this game. This is a criticism they had before. I thought I noticed the same trend holding up. So, we'll see. I could be wrong. Especially a lot of the times with this stuff. When I'm game planning or I'm, I'm trying to figure out what people are doing, I'm spitballing. So I was actually explaining this to somebody last night. I'm going to help them game plan. I've been hired to as a hired gun for the next few weeks during the playoffs. It was just like, I have a pad and paper, and I'll just be like, okay, we're going to run this call. It might be like the third play of the game, which is, by the way, this is the third play of the game on defense. And then plays five, six, seven, and eight show that it's a shit idea. Like, and it just gets crossed off. But a lot of this stuff, you're kind of just throwing out stuff, and you're, and you're, you're, creating hypothesis and you're trying to prove yourself right or prove yourself wrong most of the time you're really trying to prove yourself wrong because if it's bulletproof then it's probably going to work but i that's the one thing i noticed with him more with the bears and and i noticed it over a two-year period and i noticed it with staley so and i didn't really see a deviation but that's the one thing that i'm like i wish there was more flexibility within each personnel group yeah, yeah. did you it, notice it, that yeah, no, you're spot on with that too because the the thing with with Vic and I think this really probably came out and if you go back and you watch their game against the Baltimore Ravens in week 4, you're going to see it. I mean, he he pretty much sticks with the same game plan from start to finish and it wasn't working for them. Uh so a little bit of stubbornness too is what, you know, even some people have said and it created some issues. You know, there was uh there's some people, former players as well that aren't on the team anymore that, you know, touch on that with Vic. Vic has a belief that we're going to run this. It's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to find somebody that makes it work. And I understand that. But also at the same time, too, we always know that to utilize your personnel based on what they're good at. Right. And if you can create a game plan that utilizes what your personnel can be good at, I mean, you can avoid some of these bigger things from happening. But Denver against Baltimore, they went straight up cover zero, 85 percent of the game and they dared Lamar to beat him with the arm, and he did. And so it was one of those moments where now we're seeing the evolution of Lamar, but for the Broncos' defense, they were very frustrated about that game plan, uh, and they felt like it wasn't doing what they're really good at. So they're kind of getting back to what they're good at, which is nice to see, and we saw it in, against Dallas. Now, can they do it against Philadelphia this week? That's going to be another question. 
It's an interesting uh, tidbit about the game plan. I didn't really know that part of it. Um, which is why I love having guys on like this, because I would have never known that. And some of the stuff, like, if, if all I know is they run w cover one all year, because this is what I see. Like, I'm, and that's, so if people will ask me, what do the Broncos do? I'd be like, well, I think they run a lot of cover one. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really have that to go off. So it's great to have somebody like you that can give context to a lot of the stuff and be like, actually, this is the first time they've done this stuff, which is fantastic. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. For guys, if, if it weren't for guys like you, this would be a lot more boring of a deal. All right. So let's watch some more snaps of one hole slash one cross. Here's an interception. This is just chef's kiss right here. Let me go back to see. I'm already. Oh, I gotta get this. Gotta get this ironed out. At least I caught myself, and I didn't watch like 12 minutes of it, and to be like, guys, you gotta switch over. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Here's one hole on the interception. One thing I'll say about Vic's system: this guy lies to your ass so many times. He does such a great job, and that's the weak safety. So many teams key on that guy, and they get your ass with him. And he's coming down late, so he's playing one cross. Now, I talked about this, and a lot, and, and I don't know. This is just a concept or, or a call that a lot of people refer back to. So when three is on the ball, the Patriots in that playoff run, when they beat the Rams in the Super Bowl, what they were doing with Tyreek was when this happened, when he would be the number three receiver on the ball, they would have Gilmore cover him, which they didn't have him cover him unless he was like three on the slot and on the ball. And they expected him with him being on the ball to run the over route. And in that case, I'm going to come down. I'm going to take the over route. And then I'm going to play to whatever the next threat is. And you're going to see this here, I believe. Please don't make me look like a fool. Please don't make me look like a fool. I mean, that is just absolutely outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Let's watch this again. Now, again, this is all off game plan. So what the Cowboys are doing here is they're running verticals. They're trying to suck everybody over here to run a shallow. They got the bender, the seam, and the dig. So I'm guessing by game plan, I don't know this to be certain, but here's what I know. As soon as he sticks his foot in the ground... Right here, he starts drifting this way. So by rule, I don't know if he just got lucky and he was looking to help on this crossing route or you're in a situation where, you know, okay, we're looking for the dig, but God, this is fantastic. I mean, look at that. Right in that window, picked off. When uh, their communication, too, as a defense, they, they talk a lot in that secondary. And these new guys at linebacker, from what I was told by a player, is that these young guys are communicating as well at inside backer. So that helps out so much. You know, th there's a thing where you don't want to over-communicate, but you want to communicate effectively, right? So on, on that one crossing pattern there, you have to wonder if the, the linebacker is communicating or giving that in-call here to Caden Stern. So he plants. He knows that Kareem is going to pick up number three coming across. And so he's just going to jump that window. He's a he, Caden Stern is a very cerebral guy. And he's been probably one of the most impressive players for the Broncos this season, dating back to training camp. He had a fantastic camp, uh, according to Vic Fangio. I mean, he was one of the standout players. And now he's getting rewarded with more playing time. This is his second pick on the year. But this came in a key moment. Patrick Sertan's out of the game at this point. He left with a knee contusion. So... Love seeing these young guys step up, and that's what makes it exciting about Vic's defense. You got these young guys now that are stepping up and playing, and everyone's like, "Well, you got to rely on all the veteran guys." Well, it, the Broncos proving it right now. You can have these young guys in, and and they're picking up the system, which has often been deemed as a very tough scheme to pick up. Which is funny because I think it's actually an easier scheme to pick up, but maybe it's because what I know, and oftentimes that that uh, um, pollutes how you view things. But I'll say this about uh Caden Stearns I don't know a ton about him I knew that he was really hyped at Texas I think he had a good freshman and sophomore year and then he he struggled a little bit I know one of his coaches and um from what I hear he's a great kid and so I'm happy for him that he's 
after struggling at Texas. You just, I just like good people doing well. And this is great. This is what's great about this. Like Jake is, is it seems to be a, either a fan of the Cowboys or a fan of the Cowboys uh, offense. Gideon, did you coach Caden Stearns? Was it in, or is it somebody else? It's somebody I know. I don't think it's Gideon because Gideon, you're from the, you're in the Northeast. But, uh, but this is what's great about this and kind of the, the, the sharing nature of what we're doing in the chat. And this is what I love. I know Twitter and YouTube can be a toxic place, but what's been cool is I've been kind of accepted by that because the coaching community is super cool, but the football fan community, um, and also, and Jake, I don't know if you're a coach or not. I, I, I don't know that, but has accepted and, and come in here in the chats and they, and they provide feedback and give me like, I don't, it's fantastic that he can pull that up and be like, oh yeah, the, the Cowboys have done this. This is why he did this. Cause unless I watched every snap of the Cowboys offense and I'm focusing on Denver's defense right now, unless I watched every snap of the Cowboys offense, it was Adam Harvey. Okay. Adam's a great guy. Um, I wouldn't know that. So I love you guys. Like, I love the comments. I love the sharing. Cause I'm the king of saying I'm wrong. I don't know because I usually don't on some of this shit. All <laughs> right. Let's get into cover eight. So I know there's there's no universal terms in football. So I'm going to break this down. I've talked about this before, but we'll do it again. Okay. What is cover eight? Okay. Cover eight is half quarter quarter. I've talked about this on a lot of different broadcasts, but I'll go over it real quick again because I don't assume... That everybody knows everything about every coverage or seen everything that we do. So if you've been here before and you've heard it before, I apologize. But we're going to go over it. All right. So cover eight. Cover eight is half quarter quarter, which is usually only seen in pro football on a large scale. Why? Because the hashes are narrow. So this half safety right here has to only cover this side of the field. And really, he only has to cover over one and two. Okay. High school, this coverage would be incredibly hard because there's a shitload more space. I mean, the high school hash would be, I think, approximately right there. It would be the field in the third. So I think it would be like, I don't know, just I think that might be a little too high. Somewhere in there. So now you have a lot more space to cover. Okay. So that's where one of the coverages where being in the NFL, having narrow hashes actually helps, which is very rare. So Vic has really made this coverage popular recently. I don't know who started doing it. I mean, I know it's in certain playbooks. I mean, I know the Miami Hurricanes 1991 playbook, it's in there. But I recognize that I've seen it a lot, uh, uh, a lot more lately with Vic, especially versus three by one. Now, this is how, this is the rules, okay? Corners, you're playing squat technique, okay? If you're to the call, you're playing a squat technique, you're carrying one, Looking for two coming out, just like you wouldn't cover two, right? Regular cover two. Okay. Safety, you're playing the halves. Okay. You're playing the half. But usually in two deep, and people say, well, why would you want to play half quarter quarter instead of playing halves across the board? Is because if you play halves, you are assigning, especially if the back doesn't go out, you're assigning one, two, my circles are shitty. Don't, don't, don't hate three people to one guy. Okay. And then you're making one guy vertical of three guys. Okay. Not a great, not, not great. Okay. <laughs> now here's, what's also fantastic about this coverage. And at first I was very skeptical the backside. Well, let me, let me stay over here. Let me stay over to this side and then we'll go, we'll go back over here. The overhang, the nickel is going to play vertical curl, vertical hook, whatever you want to call it. Basically, he's walling two all the way down the field. And I believe they leave it on. So he's going to stay on. Okay. I do not know the rules. Now, I, I was funny because I was talking to somebody recently. Oh, everybody plays this concept the same. I'm not completely sure how they do it now. Because, because it's quarters backside, this guy is working off of three. Or he's actually, I'm sorry. Let me back that up. Let me let me kind of let me kind of fit. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go around so it makes more sense. I'm gonna kind of go backwards to install this or talk about this coverage. I promise it will make sense. I promise, promise, promise. Okay, so over here you're playing quarter. So the corner's on one. The safety is poaching three from the backside. We call this solo, and the backer is on the back. Okay, that's a pretty standard thing. 
Basically, if three is across, he's going to take a man-to-man. -man. If three is out, you'll help number one back over here. Or, depending on how good he is, you can read the eyes of the quarterback and then you can help front side. So if you get like, you know, three out with, you know, three out with two on a post. I'm going to clean these lines up in a second because I know it's starting to get crazy. You can help with, okay? Now, if you were playing two deep coverage and like two buster or whatever the hell you want to call it, where you're walling everything, this guy would have to wall three vertical, which means this guy would have to wall two vertical, which means the corner, if he got something coming back inside, he would have to stay on it because they drain out these people or what you can do, which is a hard, we did it in high school, but it was a pain in the ass, is you can come off your wall. So if one comes inside, you come off of it, and then the corner squeezes. People play it differently, though. And I don't I don't know exactly how, and maybe we'll discover this tonight. Maybe I'll learn something tonight uh, besides anything about the Denver Broncos players. I mean, I can tell you about what Cream Jackson did in college, but that's about it. <laughs> so um, and I can tell you about Pat Sertan practicing in Alabama, but, yeah, that's, that's about all I can tell you. But anyway, because we're playing quarters on the backside – because it's man here, because this guy is poaching three across, okay, this guy right here can sit in this hole and help on crossers, help on this guy coming from the inside. He is kind of like a, a true, he's almost free, okay? It's a middle hook, but think about it. Three's ver if three is over five yard, really backer depth, he's taking it. I mean, he's a little deeper than normal. He's lined up at about 14 yards. But if this guy starts to go vertical and he starts to sit down, sorry, bad drawing, ran into my keyboard, he's going to drive this. Really, his whole job right here is if three goes away, I got to take it because they will drain this out because it's man on the back side. He would have to go with it. So I got to, we called it a short wall. So what we did was is we would play quarters because he's actually, even though he's to the passing strength, really he's playing the backside coverage, which is very, very unique in split safety coverages. Usually the Mike or whoever this guy is right here would work to this side. But because of how this guy's playing back over here, he actually is going to basically do what this side does instead of 99.999% of the time, which is what that side does. I'm sorry if this is rambling. But this is very, very important to decide this or to understand this, to understand why people do the things that they do. And I don't know of anybody else. I mean, this gets me sound like a dick, but I don't know of anybody else that's really talking about this stuff. So I'm mm -hmm. going to. Uh, so what you're going to see here is some beautiful stuff by having this guy only have to wall this guy across. And basically, if he goes vertical or out or, or does anything else, I can kind of eyeball the quarterback, look for routes coming in. You're going to see some really, really cool concepts right there. Okay. All right. Everybody still with me? Did I bore everybody to death? Did everybody leave? <laughs> Looks like, like we're, we're still, still good. good. Okay. I mean, I know it's a long-winded explanation, but I really, I had a eureka moment when I was watching this, and, like, I saw one of the bonuses. So here's a snap. So this is actually maybe not the best concept to show first. This is actually a really, really, really cool concept. I, uh, Joseph, you're right. The only time I've seen it is clip, Bama's clip, what they call posse, where you're playing two trap over the top and backside quarters, which we've done before. Uh, so drive concept, everybody's, I mean, everybody's been running this for years. Three on the basic, I'm, I'm country and I coach defense, so it's a dig. Shallow. Some sort of post or curl or whatever. And then whatever you want backside, he's going to try and widen this out to get this area in here. And then the X can do whatever. Okay. They actually run drive. It's like a drive return. I thought this is a really cool concept. They start to run the drive and then pivot back out. Really, really neat concept. I liked it. Okay. Now you see the backside safety. You see him work towards the tight end because he's up the field now, with the shallow, he's probably thinking, okay, I'm going to get shallow dig. So, some people will run post over here, like run a curl here, run the post. Uh, 
So he's probably looking at the quarterback. And you can see he works. Now there's a dig on the backside. So he's basically free. Now that three is not going vertical. He's going vertical, but he's going away from him. So here's the thing. When you count the route distribution afterwards, he is no longer the... So let me back up. One, two, three, one, two. If you're Saban land, this would be five. This would be four. Okay. The route distribution starts. Boom. He is now the two. Sorry. <laughs> I'm an idiot. He is now the three. He is now the two. So I don't have this guy anymore. Right? I can read the QB's eyes. It's Cream Jackson. He's a veteran. Read the eyes. Look to the backside dig. I believe this was a catch. But I actually put this on because I thought this was a really cool concept by the offense. You can see the corner playing... Uh, Playing flat technique. They try to widen him out for the return. You can see up at, up here at the top right here. They're trying to widen him out to hit those return routes back outside. But they're pretty locked on. And so that's the only guy who's really open. I mean, unless you want to call this guy open right here. But yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> well, well, even he, too, on uh, with the Kyle Fuller up there getting flat, that's actually something he's really struggled with this year because he's had a tendency to not locate the receiver. He, he thinks that he can shadow him against the sideline. And he's staring at the quarterback, which, look, you always have to be in position if you're going to stare. But he's been getting lost on that. Uh, and so sometimes you don't want to overcommit. Sometimes you see a lot of DBs overcommit over the top of them. And then you see the wide receiver settle down or break inside, and then obviously they have that open cushion. But no, this is this is key exactly what you're talking about here with Kareem reading number three initially. Uh, that's just something we've seen out of Vic's defense. Now, you know, I, I think if you look at this game in comparison to let's say the Broncos' first three games of the season when they started off three and zero, oh, the biggest thing for them, I think, is the inside backer backer position, position because, because they, they had Alexander, Alexander Johnson, Johnson and Josie, Josie Jewell. Jewell. Those, Those guys, guys aren't, aren't fast. fast. Those, Those guys, guys aren't, aren't cover linebackers. linebackers. These, These two guys here, here they, they have 4-4 four, four speed in Browning, Browning and, 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 and Kenny, Kenny Young. Young. They, they can, can cover. So I think, I think we're actually seeing Vic Fangio kind of get, get back to a little bit of what he did in Chicago when you have guys like Danny Trevathan and Roquan Smith, guys who are athletic, versatile, can play the run, play the pass. This could be the start of something good for the Broncos defense in the next coming weeks ahead. So I think that was a real difference maker in this game for them because the secondary – they were giving up big plays is because of all those underneath stuff, the linebackers weren't hedging. They weren't creating that wall initially. Um, and that was a huge issue for them. Absolutely. And sorry, chat. I had the huddle channel muted. I'm going to figure this out for next week. This is, we're going on a journey. I had, so I had the huddle when we were in the huddle window, I had my mic uh, muted and then I switched over channels and I wasn't muted. I'm listening. And then I see the, the flashing lights. I'm like, shit. Uh, that's exactly right. And got some questions in the chat. So Tyler, let's go back to the film. I had to unmute myself. If three goes directly vertical and not a deep cross, is the weak safety still poaching? Okay. The answer is yes and no. Yes. Technically, if three is vertical, I got him. Here's the thing, though. The reason the weak safety has to poach three is because you need three guys deep on three verticals, right? However, nobody, if you run four verts like this, you're not getting four. People think four verts because you're going deep. Four verts opens up, you know, deep. Four verts opens up with hor or verticals or shit. I can't even talk. Horizontal spacing in here. So if you were to send three down the pipe, The, one of these guys is going to go underneath, so they're going to work to it. So let's talk about a, 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 a big concept in the red zone. I call it ND. Some people call it Buffalo 7. In, in, corner. Okay? This guy is running a corner route, but he's going to see that guys are coming underneath. Because the guys are coming underneath, he's seeing three and he's seeing these guys out here. He knows this guy's going to end up picking that up. Now, quarters is a pain in the ass. And this is a concept I'm surprised I haven't seen. And if I ever see this, and maybe somebody's done it, I don't know. I've never seen it before. It's a concept I drew up in 2008 and was like, holy shit. I hope nobody ever does this. But now that I'm not really in the business, I don't really care anymore. Is, okay, I got to make sure I get this right. Hmm. 
You want to mm. occupy this guy, get the corner run in here, and then have <laughs> this guy have to play back over here. Or something to occupy. And actually, I got halfway through the draw, and I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot the concept. But having to make this guy cover. But because he's playing halves, he can play over the top and can play anything coming back over here. Now, Gideon, fantastic question. Because if you're calling a split safety defense, so how I would call this is five wall solo. Okay, five wall solo. So if you're in the TCU land. Okay. Um, he's the VH of three, meaning he's going to wall three down the field. Now, if you come off, whether you come off or what you do, that's up to the coach, that's up to the tag, whatever. But here's what happens. This safety would go, this is for my high school guys that are watching, five wall left, five wall reading left, five wall reading left, backside safety is going solo, solo, solo. Whenever we're in solo, okay, our away side linebacker, our will, if you flip your will to trips, your mic, whatever you want to call him, he's going to say Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. Now that means I've got this guy man to man. You have to be a short wall because guess what? I'm in man. I may be drained out. I may not. I may be drained out. I may not be drained out. So I need you to take anything back over this way. Now, because he's basically doing the same shit, if his coaching points... Now, this is where it overrides, and this is where you get really deep in the weeds. If you're playing Saban Seahawk, where which is an FIB check or Steeler, I forget what it's called, where it's basically the corners on one, the nickel has the vertical of two out of two or three. And then you're walling three inside. And this guy's playing over the top between one and two. What you would do is if you got the drive concept, the difference between stubby and Steeler and Seahawk is if you get the drive concept, because this safety right here is not nailing down. He's over the top. You got a wall. So you might do this and leave the nickel on that. Then obviously you wouldn't push it. Now, the, I'm really, really getting the weeds here. If you have the threat of four strong and you have this concept, you've got five wall and you have solo, you would say Chevy, 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 or whatever you want to use for that. Solo, solo, push, push, push alert, push alert. And if he swings, now he becomes the short wall. And then however you would play this uh, depends on their rules. What I would do is I would leave this guy intact. I would have him be the wall of this guy, and then I just have him play that swing. Not like that angle, but I'd push out here. You don't want to push four guys over. You just want to just leave him on it and go. Uh, question in the chat, Vast, when Staley was running uh, cover eight with the Rams, didn't they lock Ramsey the single side and play? Yes. What I was about to say is, and I got sidetracked with my own ADHD, you can only do this if you have this guy right here that can play man on the backside with no help. Now, also remember, this is not all that they do. So that's a piece. And you'll see later in the game. And because we're watching by concept, we're not really watching by coverage. I'm sorry. We're watching by concept. We're not watching by the, the how the game flowed. We're watching how the game flows, but within one concept. There's a, a point at the end when it's Scribini time, when there's like four minutes left. Where Vic is going cover six. Cover six is quarter, quarter, half. Cover eight is half, quarter, quarter. He's going six, eight, eight, six, six, eight, eight, six, eight. And he's just changing where the doubles are. And you can see it. You can see him doing it. All right. Let's go to the next snap of eight. my notes say here I'm not I'm I've got bad tags here so poach all right so here's drive Ooh. so this is actually they ran drive return and now here's drive okay so now like I said since this guy is going vertical he's gonna take it which keeps him from turning his back and running they're playing uh, a concept over here. Some people, uh, it's got a thousand different names, but with the cut split, they're playing quarters over here. They're playing a two-man game. Now, I this I this always scared the shit out of me. We call this a banjo. And why this scared the shit out of me is because this guy right here is looking over here. He's not playing with zone ice. He's got three vertical. So the thing, and I've never seen this before, but the thing that scares me about this is I start to go here. And I get this, 
And then this guy just sticks his foot in the ground and runs here. Now, <laughs> with this guy being here, it may be a problematic body position. You'd run right into the guy. But maybe you kind of curl this guy down. And now you're switching between a backer running with CD. I think that's CD. I, yep, I can't yep. tell. And, and, and a corner on a back. But they're basically saying, hey, listen, they're tight here. You take the drive. You take the swing. And the other giveaway that it's drive is the receivers. Three is on the ball. Usually when three is on the ball, he's going to push vertical, and two is going to come underneath. Kind of the cardinal rule of defense when studying an offense is if two is on the ball, he is going to clear space for two, one to come inside. I know there's a third guy out there. I'm just using two receivers. Pretend this guy doesn't exist. If two is on and one is off, two is going to go vertical and one is going to come underneath. If it's the other way around and you have a guy on the ball here and a guy off the ball here, he is clearing space for him to go outside. So the key right here is already saying three is on the ball, so it's going to be over or drive with the dig and the shallow. And you can see them pass this off. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I screwed up. This is the wrong play. I apologize. My bad. They're actually running... Dig post. Apologies. But this is where you can see, remember all that long-winded ass explanation here. We're talking about the strong hook player. Okay, three is not going inside right now. Now I can look around, look for work. Now here's the crazy thing is they let this go. Now this is... <sighs> you can also do this. If you're playing quarters... You can play three over two with these three guys, so it's kind of a weird. It's kind of a weird conce concept because usually when you play defense, if you're playing split safety, you're playing four over three, and you're playing three over two. Right? That's kind of like the math. What they're doing is they're saying, okay, we're gonna play three over two, and we're gonna play four over three this way, which is a very unique concept. My only concern with this concept is, and I'm not Big Fangio, so I can't tell you, is if they run mesh. So let's say they take this guy under and this guy here. How would that fit? But they're letting the strong hook player, which this is a very much a cover three uh, concept where you have the strong hook player take the crosser. So this is almost like, three. it looks like it's, it, it looks like cover three concept over here because the corner like, this is something you normally do in 3D. You would call this, you would look for the bender, the strong hook player would play the crosser, and then you would play the swing to the wheel, and then this guy with depth can play both. So it's all it's kind of interesting. It's it's a rare occurrence, but they're almost using 3D rules with inside of quarters to defend this stuff. So the strong hook. See, I'm learning too. I mean, that's the great thing about this is you can almost... You know, when, when guys ask me about game planning, it's cool to be like, all right, here's my final game plan. But it's almost better to see you kind of work through it. You know, you're a coach. You know what I mean? Like seeing somebody's thought process, Cody, like I, I, I'm learning too. And I'm seeing stuff and going, oh, that's wrong. Or, you know, that's right. Or, oh, I've never seen that before. It's kind of fun to, I mean, that's what makes it fun to me is I'm getting to discover new things too. Otherwise, yeah. I'd yeah. just be like, well, okay, I know this <laughs> shit. The, next. When, when I, I get, get the, the tape, I, I'll watch I'll watch one play back maybe four or five times just to see. You know, I'll play it back full. I'll, I'll play the end zone, the sideline, and then I'll go back and I'll watch it specifically uh, over and over again. And so I'm keying each read there, seeing how it changes, seeing how a player's movement changes. But especially to here in the dime, Caden Stearns, once again, could have been a pick six. Kyle, Kyle Fuller, Fuller vacates a little bit on the outside route as well yeah i've watched this play like 74 times i'm gonna watch it one more time uh, i want to kind of watch the front side here i think you're spot on because it's hard because okay so help me out here is this fuller right here or is that full no, that, 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 that's, that's full on, on the outside stearns, stearns is, playing is playing on the, the inside. inside he's, he's actually, actually number the number, number he's, he's inside, inside number three, three right there, there. Who, number, number two, two that's, that's nate, nate harrison so harrison because so he's supposed to wall two inside out Two and three are close-ish, and three's on the ball. So he's thinking, oh, shit, this guy might go inside. So I gotta, I'm got i going to play this almost like zone. So this is when you would take the walls off, and you would play um, more like a zone concept, which is what ends up happening. But, man, he almost drops a pick. 
So Tyler, real quick to answer your question, thinking the offense runs a slot fade from one and two. So let me think of this here and here, and then a seam by three. Yeah, that's a good concept. He could poach from over there. But here's what would end up happening. In quarters, or in halves, what end up happening is, well, it's halves, so it may not play like this. If it was quarters, right, if you got hitch, fade, seam, okay, what would end up happening is the corner would bail, would make a smash call, the nickel would come out and play this, this guy here is reading two to three if it's quarters, so he would end up taking this, the corner would take the slot fade, the nickel would play there. Now if it's halves, the corner would sink on this more, the safety would have to split two and three, because three is staying on this side of the field, so that's a pain in the ass, that's a great call, and then he would be late on this sort of thing, but that's that's actually not, that's a great route, it's a great route combination that may affect that, so well done. All right, here's a sack. One for the good guys. By the way, Scribini. Oh, you can't see the tag. So Scribini is a word that I was taught by my safety's coach at Sarah. Anytime it's in garbage time, we call it Scribini time. All right, here's another sna uh, snap of cover eight. Here's, I think this is just. Okay, so this is what I don't know. I mean, it's just gobbledygook in here on the offense. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to do. I mean, and the other thing I don't understand is, and I don't, I mean, this, obviously this was coach Darby's 21, right? Yeah. yeah. So he lets, I mean, in quarters, you gotta, you gotta play that. So he's got to drive this dig. Now I know let's go to the top of the play. You also have to keep in mind. It's 30 to zero. There's six minutes left in the game. Uh, I mean, so they're probably playing soft cover eight corner to me is not very hard Gideon. It's the same thing as cover two corner. Sorry. I got trigger happy with the remote. Okay, I mean, like, I don't, I mean, so they're playing soft. Okay, throw the dig, tackle it, the clock runs. So that's probably what they're doing. But usually if you're going to run this and you're going to try to get this guy underneath, you want to sneak him in. No, cover eight, uh, Gideon, to the to the strength, it's, it's, it's a cover two corner. You're playing halves to the strength side, quarters on the back side. That's what I'm calling cover eight. That's what Fangio calls cover eight. Cover six is quarter, quarter, half. But I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what the Cowboys are trying. So they're playing a vertical hook technique. Now, here's the thing: is because their safeties are so deep when they play three week, uh, or what they call cover nine, this looks like nine to me. And so you're maybe trying to hit the bender, and you're trying to sneak this guy in the seam. But you, you, you got a vertical hook player, so you run a curl here. You run a guy right over on the over route to the guy that's standing there. You try to sneak a dig who's like five yards underneath this guy. And basically covered almost two people. I just don't understand. It. And I get it. It's 30 to zero. And party is like, I just want to get the hell out of here. If people say, oh, you're quitting on your team, whatever. It's 30 to zero. I mean, you got a quarterback coming off an injury. I mean, I mean, you got to know when to say, all right, we lost this one. You know, 17 games, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Second, Second loss, loss of the, of the season. season. He'll, He'll be okay. okay. All right. Here's another snap. Of, so now we got the, the halves to this side. So we got two over here, four over here. Okay, I got some crazy ass. I'm, I'm, I'm right-clicking. I'm doing all sorts of crazy shit over here. I mean, same deal. Now, here's the underneath call. And we talked about the benefits of the strong hook. So I'm going to make sure, because, again, this guy is over here on this side. So I'm just not simply saying this play right here. Okay, I'm going to take three if he comes back. But if he doesn't, I'm just going to sit here. You obviously, you got to give some body presence. The other thing is you want to make him go over the top to buy him time. Uh, but you see him come off of it. This is, this is we talked about this earlier. Okay. One of the routes that beats cover eight or two deep zone to really just two trap, two man, whatever, is you clear here, you clear here, and you get this guy to go out hard outside, snap it inside, and throw it in this void. Now, if we were playing a, a two wall or whatever, this would be a problem, but because this guy's playing on the low side. Now, remember, you might be saying, well, Vass, why doesn't everybody just play this coverage? If it's so fantastic, 
Why why is anybody playing too well? Why why don't you just play cover eight? I don't get it. That's because you got to be able to handle that guy one on one back over there. And if you can't, you might want to give him help. So now you're going to get the safety over the top or this this is McCaffrey and you're like, "Hey, I don't want to be in man on that backer." <laughs> you know, um Zeke is a good running back, but he's not somebody that you're like, he's going to juke me out of my shoes on an option route. So that's another thing when you're designing these coverages and you're picking your coverages. Can I win over here? The obvious answer, 45 plays in the game is, yes, I can. Can I win here? Yes. Because really, when you're playing quarters, it's it, I said it's four over three. It's really five over four. Five over three. Because you're buying this guy to the front side. Even though this guy's coverage is being affected by what's going on over there, he's still a part to the strong side. But those are the answers. Because I know when I, I, I would sit in and watch this stuff and be like, well, if this is so good, why not do it all the time? Well, okay. Is this cat smart? <laughs> Can you cover? Can you cover? You know, <laughs> if this was, it's 30 to 0. If this was 14 0 Cowboys, I mean, Dak would just throw that all game, right, Cody? I mean, you're, you're, you're a coach. Yeah, no, no easily. easily. But that's what they want at this point. Is like, go ahead. You need thirty well, freaking points in five minutes. So again, there's some, there's some, there's a method to the madness. Getting nasty team slip corners when playing QB to have the corner to cover eight to have the best lockdown defender in the single side. Um, I would say I don't know if they flip necessarily for that, but usually they're going to put. You want your get your best guy either on their best receiver or if they have two really good ones. You want him away from the passing strength. The more that you can single up over here, the better you are. See, this yeah, is what's fantastic. Denver, Denver doesn't, doesn't switch, switch a lot either. either. Denver will – Darby will stay right corner. Sertan always stays left. Uh, and they never move. There's a couple of times, too, where they'll move Sertan depending on situation. I, it's very rare. Right. And Fangio, to my knowledge – now, I'm not saying Darby is – I'm not comparing Sertan to Darby, but I didn't see like a – in this game, I'll tell you this. In this game, I didn't see a huge drop-off. I wasn't like, oh, my God. I mean, Darby made some fantastic plays. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I didn't see a, a huge drop-off. Now, when Fangio was at the Bears, they played their guys left and right when they had Fuller and Prince of Mukamura. But if you have a guy like Ramsey who's just – I mean, just – I mean, I think he's the best corner since Revis. Yeah. Now you want to flip him. Now there's some advantages to that. And yes, you want to put your best guy in the backside. And Jake is absolutely right. Damn, Jake, can you come in all the chats, brother? I appreciate your your activity, your knowledge. It's been fantastic. Cody, you've been awesome too, man. Thank you so much. I love, I love this stuff. This, this stuff is, shoot, I, I do this all day, honestly. <laughs> So the corner buys this in route back inside. Now you have the strong hook defender that can also play that. You're vicing the route. It looks it looks like, well, no, it doesn't really because this guy's off and this guy's sitting here. I'll say it looks like too deep, so maybe you trick him into it. But again, it's 30 to 0. And, if, and the other thing is if you're making, even if he catches this wide ass open, let's say, I mean, if the strong hook defender screws up and there's a huge lot of space in here, I mean, that's that's a that's a that's an issue. But let's say the corner sinks off, which in thirty to zero, I'd have him sink and turn him loose. I mean, you catch this ball, you get six seven yards, and the clock is running. <laughs> like, okay, have fun. Now, also, I, I need to be clear. I was given. I, I said earlier that Fangio was predictable when he was in his dime stuff. Um, and I, I again, it was it was a it was a. Uh, theory that I had, a, a, a guess, a hypothesis. I've been wrong. They've been playing dime this whole time with all their quarter stuff. So I was wrong. And their dimes, actually, Stearns has been doing fantastic. But this also says to me, because when they were, when he was at the Bears, they did a lot of stuff. I mean, Roquan is a freak athletically. No. But, you know, they kept their backers in a lot more especially if you have young guys and you're having to do all these exchanges and all these coverages. I mean, if you get a backer, any, any, any swinging dick can get in here and say, okay, I mean, this is backyard football. You guys are comboing. You have the back. You're the rat. If he comes across, you take him. You're the rat. Take the first crosser. This is who we think the crosser is going to be. And that's not hard. Some of this other stuff is hard. Here's another snap of cover eight. Here's a completion. So again, late in the game, this is actually the very next play. 
you get verts. This is the poach. And that's where kind of something you put, you, you pointed out, Jake, that's where you can have the issues again. It's late in the game. You know, it's third and 15. You don't want to, you don't want to choke up on anybody. You don't want anybody stupid, but I also, also want to give the Cowboys some credit. Like I don't, I think this might have been a free play as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Dak, I, I, I thought Dak, got, I mean, yeah, he didn't play fantastic, but I didn't see all these massive problems. All right, here's cover eight. Here's some route distribution stuff. So they motion back. Okay, they're running shallow again or drive. Actually, no. They're running flood. They're running flood from the other side. Oh, this is okay. So this is two man drive at the same side with the swing just coming across. So this is a two man drive. So let me draw the routes beforehand. So you got to clear out and out. I forgot who runs the shallow. Okay, it's it's uh, the the wide out. So he's gonna run this. You're gonna get the dig from this side, and you're gonna get the swing coming across. Let's see. Let's watch what the read is. He's looking front side. I don't know. See, th this is one of the only things. But then again, that corner. If he throws that out right here, that corner is picking that off and housing it. There's really nowhere to go with the ball. If he hits the shallow. Sorry, I'm going. You can see my mouse, right? I, I didn't want to yep, yep. illuminate it or whatever. He throws this here. He drives it. I mean, he can throw this dig right here in this window. But look, I mean, look, look who's nailing down on it. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying is now, again, this is a fantastic coverage. The guy misses. And this is what this is football. This is spread football. You're getting guys in space. They got to win on one on ones. The corner tries to take a kill shot, trying to probably preserve the shutout. They're driving. Um, he takes the kill shot and misses it. Pollard, who I gave a little shit to earlier, gets a big gain. I'll get to Penny in a second, Gideon. But, I mean, the coverage, again, the coverage is fantastic. Is that a corner? Is that is that that's a backer? Or no, this is the dime. Yep. Yep. Stearns. Stearns. Yeah, so Stearns made it. Uh, yeah, he comes over. Yeah, so Stearns, so we saw Stearns gone good and Stearns gone bad, but the coverage is fantastic. You just whiffed on the tackle. And that's one of the things, like, this is, I want this to be entertaining. I want it to be light. I want to have fun. But primarily, this is educational. And, like, I think a lot of football teams, or a lot of football fans, they see shit like this. Oh, that play sucked. What a dumb coverage. I mean, Jesus. I mean, how well do you need to cover this? I mean, this is almost perfect. My, My favorite, favorite thing, thing in the world, world is the, the re instant reaction from a, a game broadcast angle versus this. And people are already saying, oh, that was terrible. What are they doing that? And then you go back and you watch and you're like, oh, okay. That's why I always like, I always tell people like, I always wait till the all 22 is out until I get my hands on it before I say, okay, hey, maybe this guy was at fault or maybe this guy could have done this better. What coverage were they and how did it change versus maybe what number three did versus what maybe a motion did? What did it, did it draw them out of their initial coverage? What did they check to? Um, what hash are they on? What's the down and distance? Just so many of these things that, you know, I don't think a lot of people really think about. And I think it can make things frustrating, right? Because you were talking earlier about, look, the coaching community here is fantastic. And then people who really love football, who are knowledgeable in football, they love this stuff too. But the people that just watch it and don't really understand the nuances of it, I think they see things like that and they, they try to pinpoint or pick apart things, but it's really off basis. And so it's always like it's great to have clarity on, on these plays that happen, the designs, the, the concepts, concepts versus, versus just, just the, the, the outrage. Everyone's looking for a reason to be outraged these days. So. so, well, and, and I agree here, here's the thing. And I, I, this is, this is how I live my life. Stay in your effing lane. That is like my number one thing that I, I, I don't know, even in football, there's so much shit. I don't know. I mean, look at this broadcast. I'm like, I don't know. This is all screwed up. I don't know. I'm not good at this shit. Like, and nobody's in the chat going, Oh, Vass, Vass is an asshole. Vass doesn't know how to use StreamYard or he doesn't know how to use this because I'm like, it's like, you can't call me fat if I call myself fat first. Like, like, okay, so yes, you're right. I, I don't know how this works, but that's no, nobody's here to get a lesson on fucking StreamYard or whatever. I don't even know what I mean. Ecamm, you know, nobody's here for that. And 
I think people that take themselves seriously, too seriously, become a target. I mean, here I am on a football podcast. I'm wearing a freaking hat from Curb Your Enthusiasm about a spite store. You know, like, it's the holidays. I should be wearing Coach Vass, make defense great again apparel. You have a shit. You know, like, but I think part of it is people don't stay in their lanes. And, like, listen, I'm as guilty as the next guy when it comes to watching any other sport besides football. Even pro football, because I don't know all the... I, it's been a while. I've talked about this many times. Why? But and I won't. I'll save you all the bullshit. But I didn't watch pro football for a while because I was coaching and it conflicted with a lot of stuff. And like basketball, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And I'm irrationally, but I don't go to experts and be like, "You don't know what you're talking about." I mean, it just doesn't matter what you feel about like a guy like Quincy Avery, okay, who is a trainer, a QB trainer to the stars. Whether you think what he does is a grift or what he does is fantastic, you know, there's. There's opinions out there. I like Quincy. I think he's one of the good guys in that space. Um, but he knows his shit. Now, yep, he yep. may not know everything, but I, I saw some of the replies that he gets to some things. And it's like, I mean, the, the what is it? The, the uh, I don't want to make this about race, but there's been stuff like the audacity of the, I wish I had the confidence of a white man in 2021 or whatever, like black Twitter says when, you know, some of these guys, the shit they write, you're just like, how do you even come up? And it's just, the, the, it's not even what they say. It's how they say it with their chest, which I guess in some point it's like, well, at least you give them credit for being confident, like standing behind what you're saying, but you're fucking wrong. Like, yeah. you know, and, and yes, there's no, there's no complete objectivity in football. Okay. There's no, there's no right or wrong. I'm going to save you the skin, the cat, even though I said it, I'm going to save you that. Cause I hate that analogy. It's tired, but there's a lot of different ways to do things, but there's, there's no like right way to do things. The Tampa two was the greatest defense ever until it wasn't the 46 bear was the greatest team or greatest defense in the world until it wasn't. They're going to build a better mousetrap. Okay. But to, to, I would not go to guys that like coach basketball for 20 years and are really well respected in the space and then start popping off. And it's just, it's just hilarious. But oh I feel God. like I've been insulated from some of that because the response I would give somebody, like, let, let's just say Jake in the chat, for example. Like if Jake was an asshole, Jake's fantastic, but let's say he was an asshole and he's like, I can't believe you don't know. The Cowboys did this. I'd be like, yeah, I don't fucking watch the Cowboys. And that would be it. Like I, I, I wouldn't sit there and be like, you're right. I, I, I could care less. Uh, I couldn't care less, uh, rather. So I think that's kind of what makes it fun too, is I'm just like, you're right. I, I, I'm an idiot. I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know, I think it's when people take themselves too seriously. All that. Anyway, I know that's not what you guys are here for, but I just, as an aside, all right, I'm going to go back to the film now. I'm going to the stuff I actually do know. So a couple of things. I think we lost your audio for a second. Yep, that's because I didn't switch it back on because I'm still, again, I'm an idiot. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, cover eight versus two by two. I think I thought I had a snap of it. They didn't get a lot of two by two um, when they called the coverage, which makes me think that they were playing a different coverage when it was two by two, um, which they will do. They will tag cover eight as a trips check um, to other coverages. But Versus two by two, it's just half quarter quarter. It's the same exact thing. It plays just like quarters. Um, and I'll see if I can get some snaps of it. Okay. This is awesome. This is what I meant by Darby kicking ass. Now, some people say, we've always played corners. We played bail technique. And again, that's what they're doing. We're even deeper in the game. It's two minutes and 16 seconds left. He's bailing outside. But watch him cut the post off on, I think that's CD. Maybe not. Yep. yep. So he shuffles, but watch him close this post and play in the upfield shoulder. Some people mm. say I should say downfield shoulder. I say upfield shoulder. I don't give a shit. I mean, that is freaking picture perfect. I hope it's in the end zone shot. Come on, huddle. I know it's playoff time and a lot of guys are watching ball. There we go. I mean, that he's open and that guy just makes up. Look at that. If I was coaching, like if I was coaching right now and I had and we had practice tomorrow, I would show my corners that before we even touch the field. I'd be like, "Look at this! This is fantastic, phenomenal." 
All right, here's cover six. They call this stuff. Now, one thing about Fangio, and you see this in other systems like Saban, and I'll explain. I promise I'll explain what Penny is again real quick. Um, you have to have words that mean different things, and here's why. If you're in the Fangio defense and you're playing a 3-4 defense versus base personnel, okay, if you say tight wheel six, which is their bit, their number one call it was when he was in Chicago versus uh, 21 personnel, which means we're going to play 3-4 or under, depending on how they would line up. We're going to rush the will, which would be their jack, the weak outside linebacker, play quarter, quarter, half. They would call that tight wheel six. Here's the problem. Those outside backers become defensive ends in the sub stuff. Okay. Oh, we have a loaded front alert too, by the way. This is the loaded front. You got three guys to one side. Um, okay. So they have different code names for different packages. So example, if you go to Alabama and you learn their flex stuff, which is actually the same personnel package, but the Jack is a fourth down rusher and he is always in the rush. They call it cover seven, which is their man match quarters. But as soon as it becomes the mint package or the tight front package where he's got to drop, they got to call it cover four because different people are doing different responsibilities in the same call. So where do you see that? You see that a lot in Fangio's system. So and when he plays quarters and base, it's cover four. When he plays quarters and sub, it's called quads. When he called, that's why I don't, I know you can't see the tags, but usually I have the tags up there. Cover six and base is tight wheel six. Here's the problem though. These guys usually aren't subbed out from base and if it's nickel. So this is nickel personnel right now. They're not subbed out when you go from base to nickel. One of the interior guys is. And now in cover six, technically, if will six and tight will six, the will would go. The Sam is actually going to be your flat player. But now the nickel is the flat player. And this guy who's used to being the hook player now has to play the flat in the same coverage. If you call it the same thing, it's going to be a problem. So they call six stuff. Some people call it cover eight stuff. And it all comes back from what I found. It comes back to Marvin Lewis, all this, this terminology. It goes back to the Ravens way, way back, which I don't know if you knew this or not. I don't know if this is widely reported. I might be breaking a story to Bronco Nation or nobody gives a shit. But uh, Vangio was let go from the Ravens. He lost a power struggle with Greg Madison, and that's why he was no longer at the, at the Ravens. So, uh, But that all goes back to Marvin Lewis. That's how far back I've traced it, or that's as far as I can get back that I've traced it. Okay, so they call cover six your typical quarter, quarter, half. They call that stuff and sub. And then eight is just eight because they don't play eight in, in base formations and base personnel. So if they did, I'm sure they may have a name for it. Anyway, so here is cover six. Now, I told you at the end of the game, they started mixing six and eight. So now I think, again, I'm not sure, but now they're trying to get a double on the X. So I'm guessing either they started pushing four strong which is a pain in the ass to have. It's easier to defend in quarters or they were trying to get a double on the backside guy. So they're going to play uh, quarter, quarter, half. So they started mixing it up. And if I were to watch the game in sequential order or chronological order, you would see a lot of that. You would see um, they'd go six, eight, six, eight, six, eight. And it was almost like, and sometimes in the NFL they'll do this. They don't do it in sub. But I know that a lot of those Ravens guys in, in, in base, they call laser pack and rock tray, which means laser pack means we're going to set the defense to the left and we're going to play quarter, quarter, half. So if the offense puts the formation to the right, it's half, quarter, quarter. But if they put it to the left, it's quarter, quarter, half because we're just playing it based on left and right. So sometimes it's not even a matter of they're matching up to the receiver strength. They're matching up to parts of the field. But that's mostly done in base. Okay, so here's quarters. You see the loaded front. Loaded fronts are three guys to one side, one to the other. What you like to do is you like to put your best guy over here. So the offense is forced to slide away from your best guy. Uh, if you really want to get funky and you want to try to maximize a shitty matchup in here, you can also put your best guy over here and pick certain really shitty players and get them around and loose. But it depends on your philosophy and what you like to do. Okay, so we got bolt or bullet uh so what has to happen now is the nickel has to expand 
this guy becomes your wall so he's going to take anything coming back over here especially because it's cover two to that side i'm going to expand out to the new three which is this guy so now right now this is one this is two this is three and this is four and that's how you count that even if this guy goes and runs and stand out here past number one as long as he's in the backfield i'm still counting this guy at one because that's your vertical threat okay if that makes sense you see him push everything back now they're kind of short-handed what's going to have to happen here is basically there's a lot on this guy he's got to take so because they're playing quarter quarter half the corners on one the safety is robbing number two two to three right so somebody's got to take this guy coming back across and it may have been an automatic i mean we, without sitting in the room we could guess all day and sometimes there's just not enough data to guess but maybe they said hey if if somebody right here is this guy we're gonna play eight and if this guy is really good we're gonna play six we don't I, I wouldn't know that unless i knew somebody on the staff now what you could do is with this safety is you could split three across and this guy and have him play the half but that's a lot of space to cover and what makes me nervous by having this not only is it a lot of uh horizontal space it's a lot of vertical space and the worst you can where you can really see this this defense become problematic versus three by one and i hate picking on him because some of those guys in that staff are my friends but you watch the national championship game in 17 alabama georgia on the touchdown game winning play they played quarter quarter half the safety stayed in the middle and almost favored this side and they just threw a fade ball outside now what the broncos do to eliminate that is the corner was playing outside press and like funneling and trailing it looks to me like they're playing like two man i'm gonna play inside hard press so if he runs a fade, I've at least got a body on it rather than you're sitting out here with nothing to do. Especially, you know, sometimes you like to play cover two to the to one receiver side. I mentioned this earlier. If you have a really good back that can catch balls in here in this space right here, you want to get a corner in the flat. However, as soon as this guy goes over here, I'm locking on. And let's back up and see if that actually happens. And it happens too early, and you get a late sub. So they're kind of looking around. They're kind of looking around. He's looking back. Yeah, I don't think it changes anything. But I've seen that as well. We actually did that. We, we would turn it like man under if the back went strong. But I, like this safety, yeah, he can help if three bends across. Like, like this safety back here can bend if three comes across. But if he keeps it skinny or, or nails down in that dig window, that's that's hard. But look, I mean, this is what's insane to me. Like, this is what I'm talking about, okay? And I'm sorry if there's Cowboy fans in here. You know, Like I said, I'm agnostic. I don't give a shit. But, like, you're down. You're up. No. Did they score? 30 to 8. Okay, it's 30 to 8. You've got a couple minutes left in the game. It's first and 10. And you're going to run all curl versus a team that's been playing cover one in quarters. <laughs> I mean, what the f What are you doing? And then you're going to blame Dak. They're going to blame Dak. I mean, the fact that he gets away and, and like, Kellen Moore had had a, had a shocker. Or whomever. I don't know. I don't like blaming coaches. I, I'm not in the building. I don't know. But whomever decided that this was going to be the plan, and not only the plan, like, listen, you put a good plan out there, like you said off the bat. The Broncos ran a, lot of sh a shitload of one. You didn't see him running a lot of one towards the end of the game. You know that they're going back to the quarter-quarter half stuff. So, do it. Like, have your quarter quarter half beaters don't run all curl when guys are playing tight on you and yeah the separation i'm not saying the receivers are bad the routes weren't helping them here's a little three-man game we call this flush or ram i can't remember i did a whole thing on this if you're interested in these three-man games go to my youtube page i did a 5-0 package thing on the patriots see i don't like this because this guy's into the slide so he's gonna pick that up this is what i like better now because of the coverage the backer has to push front side. But if you're playing, let's say they were playing cover eight and they're playing two back here and you're playing it like two man, here's what can hold this. Now, obviously this guy motions, so you'd have to go with it. But where this stunt becomes effective and maybe they, they weren't getting a lot of this, so they thought, okay, where this stunt is effective is if they can't slide and you 5-0 this, meaning they have to block the five down. Yep, da, Fangio was Dom Capers, top guy. Uh, if you look at the 1997 Carolina Panthers playbook that's floating around online, you can see a lot of the stuff is still there. 
that becomes that becomes good because the center has to stay on this guy. But with this back motioning out, this guy moving over, he can now go work to the slide side and easily pick this up. <clears throat> but don't jump. Don't jump. He gets out of there, throws it away. I mean, still lands it near the guy. I mean, that's just insane. Um, all right, here's box. This is a quarters explanation. I probably should have started with this. We went right to the advanced shit tonight. Okay, this is this is annoying. What the fuck are you doing? This is <laughs> Kansas, Kansas City, City Chief stuff. stuff right what there. is this? The Bruno Mars that Bruno Mars video on Twitter with the doo wop group. What the hell is this? Cool. They don't. I guess maybe because they're playing in man, they're thinking, okay, we're gonna get different matchups. So <laughs> this is this is embarrassing. Okay, so the Broncos are playing box. What box is? It is a quarters checked a bunch, and you are literally creating a box. The corner is gonna take the first outside vertical. The safety is going to take the second, or really the first inside vertical. Okay, I'm trying to draw this and spell this out. It looks like shit. Okay. So just follow along. First outside vertical. First inside vertical. First outside guy. First inside guy. And if they break back, it, like if they run, we used to run a play called mini curl, which was over the ball. Um, he's out. He's out. And then this guy would break back in. If you have two guys going the same way, this guy would buy it or however you want to play it. Those are by... by uh, rule. Anyway, you can see the distribution of the box with the back involved. Now the Cowboys did a good job of getting, of trying to suck people over. Here's, you can see the drive concept. They're trying to, all they're trying to do. Football is a simple game made complicated by coaches. They're hoping it's man. This is what they're hoping right now. So now Kellen, and this is where sometimes when you put out a new, this is, this is huge. When you put out a new game plan, you say, I'm going to play cover one. The Cowboys are expecting quarters and quarter, quarter, half. And then they realize, oh, shit, they're playing a lot of cover one. Let's put on our one beaters. And then you stay a step ahead of them. This is what calling a good game is like. So now they're starting to run quarters earlier in the game. This is still the first couple series. This is a cover one beater. Bring everybody over here. Have your back. Get out here with the, you know, because remember, young linebackers, right? So this guy's got them. I'm dropping. I'm looking for rat. Oh, my God. There's a shitload of crossers. Oh my God, there's a bunch of crossers. So I got to go for a dig here. And then you get this guy one-on-one -on -one over here, right? Great play call. Problem. They're not in that coverage. So the nickel stays out, does a good job of, and this is, I know this is like, yeah, no shit, but it is really hard to get DBs when everything goes away. Everything is away from you to say, I'm going to sit out here and not chase inside. It's it's harder than you think. You know, you coach these guys. He sits outside. He latches on. There's your box. Now watch after the pattern distribution. Right there. There it is. That's why it's called box. What do you think of that? Um, beautiful. beautiful. I wish I had more time to watch this stuff. Because like a lot of like shit, them. I'm like... Doing, I'm watching it one time through, and I'm like, oh, my God. And then I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of stuff. But because they do it on Tuesday, and I've got others. Like, I have clients, and I have a Sunday night Zoom and stuff, and I don't get the all 22 till Monday evening. I've got not a lot of time to turn this around. Let's watch. I haven't given the end zone much love. Watch this, watch this spin move here. Whoop. Draymond, Draymond Jones. Jones. Deborah loves those Ohio State guys <laughs> a, a lot. lot. Now, what's with that? It's been the, the new trend the last couple of years. They're, Wake Forest and Ohio State have been Denver's kind of pools that they've been drawing out of, and Alabama, Alabama recently. recently. And everyone was freaking out in the last few years. They're like, John Elway doesn't draft players from Alabama. Well, he went out and got Jerry Judy. <laughs> For sure. All right. So I know I've gone a little slow on this. I'm going to start picking up the pace because we saw some really good stuff tonight and I've had some really great questions. So I'm going to start going a little faster. Here we have some fire zones. This is called, they call this punch fire zone. All it is simple. We're going to slant away from the passing string. We're going to bring the nickel off the edge. We're going to spin down to three deep. We're going to play fire zone coverage. Thirds, strong hook, weak hook. No, I'm sorry. Seam flat, 
Okay, let me let me let me draw this. Let me get a formation that's not all condensed because it looks like shit. I'll I'll come back to that play. Okay, it's tight end wing, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so I promised like seven times that I would go over Penny. So let me go over Penny real quick. Let me jump around before we get in this. I know I'm all over the place. Shocker, right? All right, so Penny. They don't run Penny. Penny was very much a. Uh, let me see if I can find an eleven personnel look real quick. That's empty. We don't want that. It's all fucking condensed shit. Let me let me get a. Okay, okay, this is good. All right, so Penny was a, definitely a Fangio thing. Um, so he just doesn't do it as much. Daily made it popular. So here is Penny. Penny is a. It's a, and it depends on the personnel. Last year. I believe the Rams ran it. Oh God, they ran it out of three, three, five personnel, and I believe it was the only thing they did out of three, three, five. And it's whatever you want to call it. five, one, three, three, five, six, one, by half dozen the other. So what you had in the secondary was the corner, the nickel, the strong safety, normal defense, free safety, corner, and then this is where it was different. Okay, you had an outside. Let me draw this from the end zone. Sorry, I'm all I'm getting all over the place. Okay. So if you had three three five personnel, you had your two, your nose, and it could be an end that's a nose or a tackle that's a nose. These are just X's on a chalkboard. You had your your two other down linemen here as the E's. You had your outside backers here as the B's. And then you had your mic. Now I've told this story before, but Robert Mays had me on. He was gonna interview um Brandon Staley and we watched and I hadn't watched their defense that year. So we're gonna watch Staley and <laughs> the first snap, I think first or second snap, he shows this formation and the mic is out of the box and the free safety is like off the screen and they have a five zero box and I just start laughing. I'm like, if I ever did that shit I get fired. So that's Penny. It's bear with too high. Usually it's done versus eleven personnel. So now when you have this guy in the game, he's here, the mic would be in the box and it's quarters. Now what's interesting about what the Rams did and why it was so effective for them with Aaron Donald. The reason that teams don't run cover three out of the tight front stuff is because they don't, in certain formations, your weak safety would have to be your A-gap fit, not usually a winning business model. However, if you're playing this, the nose is going to lag. So you got to block here. You're going to block the nose. You're singling the end. The only gap to run in is this A gap, which most of the time you'd be like, oh, you wouldn't run it running an A gap, right? It's not a great, not a great look. Well, the problem is that is Agent 99. And so the one place you can really comfortably run the ball is in an A gap where he's playing gap and a half, which was seen to be some new kind of fascinating concept. It's been around for literally ever which is you play primary secondary gap, which means as the three technique, I play the B gap. If he bases out, I play it, play it, play it. And when the back starts to get to my level, I shed inside and I make the tackle. That's what they mean by gap and a half. So that's Penny. It's just bare out of quarters. And um, yeah, everybody didn't know what to call it last year, but they they call it Penny. Um, but anyway, all right. So back to back to the other stuff sorry i took us on a little detour all right so punch fire zone is your your basic again bring the nickel slant the defensive line away come down play fire zone coverage so you're playing three deep three under nothing nothing revolutionary but you see some great stuff here with them slanting getting pressure off the edge forcing dak to move around the pocket make throws down the field okay so I got a question early on. I said in a previous webinar, stream, whatever the hell you want to call it, that Vic Fangio teaches his cover three off of fire zone. And everybody was like, what does that mean? Okay, normally when you play cover three, so imagine this, this nickel's not going. So let me actually step ahead here for a second. And and Cody, I realized, I know, I think you're on mountain time. You're out, you're out in, the, uh, in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, you're out in Colorado. I understand it's getting late, and if you have to go, I told you two hours. I totally understand. I think people have been asking great questions. I still got about ten clips left, so I'm going to take through this. But, um, but I, if you have to go, I totally understand. I've held you hostage. No, <laughs> no hang, hang on. on. All right, so, um, so I'm just going to show a snap of three D. This isn't exactly great because 
Um, he's not coming down like a curl to flat player because of how they play their cover three, which we'll get into. But let's just say this guy is actually here. Okay. This guy doesn't exist. And he's here. Okay. Most teams that teach cover three, they start off by playing zone cover three. Okay. So they play thirds. They play thirds. And when they're playing thirds, if there's one receiver, they're playing inside. If there's two, they're playing depth and divider, meaning they're splitting. And somebody asked about the divider rules. I'm not sure in the NFL guys do the divider rules, but you're splitting it so you can play vertical one and two. I'm going to drop to the curl flat. I'm going to drop to the curl, expand only to flat when the quarterback turns his shoulders. I'm going to drop to the hook, only expand when the quarterback turns. I'm going to drop to the hook and then the curl. I'm going to drop the curl to flat versus two by two formations. So imagine this guy's not here and he's over here. Okay. And then what happens is teams play a version of match three. Now you can play it like Bama where they play it like zone. So they scooch back, scooch back, scooch back and dro drop like zone. And then once he comes on the seam, I pick him up. Okay. Or you can play like Aranda does. I think like Vangio does, which is basically, it's like catch man. And I got this guy unless he goes inside. Okay. Now, Vangio, I don't know the exact story. So that's, that's match three. That's how people usually teach match three. Okay. And there's a lot more to match three. I'm just giving you the basics to, to show this as a example. Okay. Now, here's where I know this to be. I know this to be a fact, but I don't know why. So I'm going to guess why. I'm guessing that Gideon, I'm not sure about that, about the dividers and rat. Uh, I, I think if you're outside, if you're an inside defender, you're outside. And if you're an outside defender, you line up inside. But um, because Fangio coached with capers, I think what happened was they taught fire zone. So when you teach fire zone, so let's just let's just remove an inside backer, okay? Because that's the easiest one to do. Okay. Erase this guy. He is over here. This guy is down here. Oh. Let me do this again. Erase. I wish there was an erase tool. I wish there was like Photoshop erase. And let's put the defender down here. Now let's just say this guy uh, actually let's say this guy's going because he's to the back. This backer here is to the back. Okay. Now, when you play fire zone coverage, you cannot play like that zone version I told you unless it's like a pro formation because if this guy is blitzing right here and this guy drops to the curl, they're just going to throw here in like a slant and the nearest guy is over here. I mean, it's like stealing, right? Okay. So what you have to do is you have to play match coverage, meaning it's basically, and I know that there's more to it, than that but basically what you're saying is i'm going to take this guy like man unless he goes in then i'm going to what they call match carry deliver to the next guy and i'll take it out so the easiest one is this i'm here i'm here i'm playing like man i'm playing like man i'm imagine he's inside um the two or three swings so I'm going to expand with, okay, so remember this guy is blitzing, so he's out of there, okay? So he doesn't exist. I'm going to match here, and if this guy goes vertical, I stay on it, I push through, and I have to match this guy, because if not, there's a huge hole in here, okay? Now, what will happen usually is, is because of that, these guys will line up inside of two, because they have to take two on the out, but they're going to let them throw it late. But they have to take away the inside. Because you can play outside leverage if you have help inside. Even if it's just one rat. If the only inside guy is going with this running back, you're screwed. There's a whole lot of space in there. So you got to play inside. Okay? But you have to play match carry delivery. Now let's say our imaginary receiver is here. This guy no longer exists. He drops down. Now, this guy outside releases. The corner is here. The back swings and two runs a drive route. What would happen is he would squeeze two. He's communicating, hey, push, 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 three's fast. I'm going to take this. And now you're going to take my guy, right? But this guy over here has nobody to pass to. 
he doesn't have a buddy to pass to, right? So he's got to stay inside on it. So Capers was the king of fire zone. So was Dick LeBeau. I know Arnsparger did it. I don't know the history of, you know, because I know Arnsparger did replace pressures where you're only bringing one and still playing seven, uh, dropping seven. I don't know all the history of that. I'm not going to get into that. But that's Fangio learned. I mean, he was at some other places, but he learned a lot from Capers. He was the DC for Carolina, I think, in 97 when Capers was the head coach, I believe. Okay, so now, what does that have to do with how they play cover three now? So, because of these fire zone rules, so most people taught spot dropping three, and then they said, oh shit, we need to play match coverage to handle four verts. They're approaching it from the other way, which they're saying, okay, we're going to play match fire zone three, but if we're going to drop everybody, we're going to play bonus hook. Okay. So, so now that I've taught you fire zone coverage, let's watch the snaps of fire zone. Then I'll teach the, how, then they go to the cover three. So I've taught you the foundations of the coverage. So now they're just replacing. So they call this punch. I'm coming off the edge. I am now, and some people call it hot to three, hot to two, whatever. Fangio calls it seam flat. So the guy dropping down here is seam flat, meaning I carry two in the seam. I take him to the flat. And if he goes, I squeeze. If if it's two by two and three is away from me, I carry my guy until I see something else. If I don't, I stay on it. If three is to me, I can exchange with one guy inside, right? I don't know if that, if anybody has any questions, uh, ask, uh, ask in the chat. Um, and Steven answer your question why they blitz a little, I think, because they didn't have to, they were kicking the shit out of everybody. Uh, they were kicking the shit out of them. And they, if you're talking about this game, they were kicking the ever living shit out of Dallas. So why blitz? Um, so, and they were safe blitzes and they, they got home. They, they did really well. They blitzed early and then they didn't do it anymore. So they're bringing the blitz off the edge. They fake, they fake zone to them. Now, the blitzer loses contain. Dak gets outside of it. But this is when you want to run fire zones. When a team is in 21 personnel, this is huge. This is very, very important. When a team is in 21 personnel, 12 personnel, run fire zones. The creeper, I know creepers and simulated stuff is the, all the rage, and it's they're great. However, if the offense is only going to release two or three people on the route, you don't need seven guys in coverage. You might as well add them to the rush, right? You want to do the simulated pressures and get more under coverage when they're more spread out. They're an 11 personnel, but it must have been a rundown. They're on the 28-yard line, so they're thinking run or play action. I'm going to force the issue off the edge. I'm going to drop down to get an eight-man front. I'm going to get single high safety coverage, so I got somebody deep. But they only release three guys. Now, they don't. what should happen is this backer butt sniffs. This backer is supposed to take that. He doesn't. Now, this is where I'll say on Dak, but again, if he's looking front side, if this is one of these combinations where, you know, the dig and this guy coming out, you're not looking at the swing. Now, this is one of the plays I mentioned early on that Dak just missed. I don't understand why he misses this, but I'm also not an NFL quarterback. I fake. He is wide freaking open. This is one of the only plays besides that crosser that was thrown behind him that I thought was an, a big error. And this is the only egregious one I saw in the game. Where I was like, what the hell? But also, remember, I'm watching the defense. I'm not watching the offense. This is not uh, you know, Coach Vass's Dak Prescott hour. But you can see how the coverage fits. Okay, here's the front. Now, if this dude stays outside, he may smoke Dak in the face. He comes underneath. He shouldn't. He allows him to escape. He tries to throw it deep. Great coverage. And then he, I love this. CD runs in the guy and he's looking for a flag. Typical receiver. <laughs> All right. Slanting into place. Now, I'm the king of four down slanting and, and bringing edge pressure. So this warmed my heart. So now we're bringing Now it's the NFL, so there's no field and boundary blitzes. You blitz from the pass strength or away from the pass strength or to the tight end or away from the tight end. We're coming from the pass strength. We're slanting this way. We're actually slanting into the play against where the play is running. Uh, uh, Joseph, a lot of people play country three. I've talked to, I know Pease does it because they don't have the time. Cause the thing with match three, if you're going to play match three, you got a major in it. And because OTA or not the OTAs, but because of the NFL PA and all their rules, 
They don't get a lot of time. So it's one of those things. If you're only going to play three as an adjustment, like the Patriots don't play match three because they play a shitload of one. So why would you need match three? You play cover one. So match three is their changeup. So teams that play country three are teams that play a lot of match coverage to begin with. Hey, hey coach, coach, someone's, someone's at, at my door. door. I, I, I appreciate, appreciate you having me on, my friend. This is this has been fantastic. I've I've loved this. I've loved interacting with the audience too. Um, I didn't want to keep you hanging there. No, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, guys, check out Cody. Give yourself a quick plug. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. You can find, find me on, on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL. Um, you know, I I tried to do the film breakdown stuff on there. I like to put it on there, but Twitter has been kind of interesting lately, so I don't want to get my account suspended because the NFL they're cracking down on certain things for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I, I need to create a YouTube channel specific for uh, some film breakdowns. But this this stuff is fantastic. Um, so much knowledge that uh, I think football fans can get off of here from your channel. So I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Thank you. If it weren't for you, this would have been a lot more boring. Appreciate you, my friend. I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. We'll be in touch. Sounds great. All right. Well, the good news is, the bad news is we lost our co-host who's going to give me all the information about the players. The bad news is, or that's the bad news. The good news is, at least we won't have any audio issues, but I'd still rather him be here. All right. So we see us slanting into the play. They're running zone. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of how they fit this. I would have liked to have seen him cross face, him cross face. Because otherwise, what's the point of blitzing? I mean, it's right there. He crosses face. If he crosses face, this thing has to wind back. The backers can stay behind it. His Twitter is at Cody, C-O-D-Y, Rourke, O-R-R-O-A-R-K, NFL. If you're asking about Twitter, he was saying they're cracking down on NFL film. But so that's the thing is when you want to bounce your linebackers out and you're slanting. So if you're going to slant here, you got to play your backers over the top of here. So either you can play the cutbacks, you're going to play the cutback here with the line. So if he forces it, you're going to play into this or he has to bounce it out. And that's when these guys can fit back over here. You always want court in high school coaches. I know we've got some in here. You always want your backers playing away from the slant or opposite the slant. Makes it cut it back. I mean, that's that's where running backs do matter. Most people, most people right here, they get tackled. They can't make that move. Maybe they can. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But you can see it there. All right, here's a snap of empty. Now, this is interesting. They bring five. They don't give a shit. I thought, oh, they're going to simulate this. They're going to drop it. It's basically, it's damn near cover one. I just left this on because I thought it was interesting to play um, to show a couple snaps of blitzes. Text gets obliterated. All right, here's a counterfeit. Watch the backside linebacker here, same blitz. I'm going to kind of fly through some of this stuff because I want to get back. I want to explain the cover nine stuff and how it fits together. And now they're bringing it from either tight end or passing strength. Again, it's 12 personnel, and they're in nickel. They're blitzing off the edge. They run it down from the backside. And this is the this is the advantage of chasing. I mean, you saw losing contain, but maybe maybe uh, you know Fangio could have told him, "Hey, listen, Dak was hurt. Maybe he's not going to run as much. So abandon the boot. Go back and just chase down the line of the run." I don't know those answers unless I'm sitting there. Or I'm talking to one of these cats. You can see him running down from the back side. Let's watch the end zone of this. By the way, I, the original plan was this was to do, I'm announcing this now. The original plan was to do this game tonight, throw in a few snaps of the Jaguars-Bills game. I started watching the Jaguars-Bills game. It was so much fun. I'm like, no way I'm going to dedicate only 30 minutes to this. Plus, there were too many good snaps to this game. So I'm going to do a show tomorrow night. Hopefully with Laurie Fitzpatrick, who covers the Jags for SI, and we're gonna break him down. And we're gonna do the same thing back here tomorrow night. Too much cool shit. They got some real fun stuff out there. You can see the slant coming back now, working with the counter. Uh, this is a shitty fit. So here's the thing. This is a philosophical thing. If you're gonna slant the line, I love spilling, but if you're gonna slant the line, you're forcing it to cut back. So you want a box here. 
So what needs to happen is he needs to fit this and fit this back to this linebacker. He's got to box it. Right now, what you're doing for you uh, scheme aficionados, you high school guys, you college guys, they're slanting to undercover three. Okay? And all that's happening is that guy's your lever player. He is your spill player. He's coming down and replaces the lever player with all these people inside, with the corner being the extra guy right here. So what should happen, how this should fit, I would not spill this because all of your help is inside. And you know, if you have followed me, I'm the king of spill, but sometimes you can't do that. So this backer does a great job. This backer should fit back and pull in here, and then the safety should come down here and over. I don't like how he slows down. This backside linebacker right here does not get over the top. He stands behind it. I'm going to tell you something. If this guy, so this is when... Uh, Going bad goes good, or however you want to say it. If this guy doesn't knife in and make this play, this could go for a mile. Right there. Let's say he pulls up on Dak. It's out the freaking gate. Maybe he makes the play. Zeke has fantastic vision. He probably cuts this out. This may have gone for six. Or it's going to be uh, a big run. I don't like. You got two guys outside the kick out, which you never want. So this backer right here should have fit right here. And this guy should pull the chain over here and he should be spilling it or really to be honest with you with the insert here, you should probably be boxing it back to this guy who's dropping down in the box or I mean, I, I don't know. That's really the best way to fit it. The nickel makes the play. You live to fight another down. All right. Bad fits here. Okay. Oh, okay. We were talking, this is what we we're talking about. Uh, cover nine. Okay, so with this, remember we talked about match carry deliver. We talked about two by two with trips. It's going to be kind of the same thing. I'm going to drop down. Now two and three are close to each other. It's not like we had before where we had a back and a receiver. Now they're close right in here. So it's going to be a fast exchange. So what should happen here is if he goes out and he is vertical, I push to him. I push out here. Corner stays outside. We're bringing the backer off the edge. We're making it look like too high. I have to match the running back. I've got the this third, or basically man, and I've got this. Now you gotta be careful with fire zone because you don't have an extra guy like you normally do inside and cover three. So if you turn this loose, you have to exchange with that guy. Remember earlier we talked about they exchange with this guy. Well, that guy's blitzing. So in quarters, you could push this. If he runs this, this guy could pick it up. But remember, he's blitzing. And he has to take the back. So if they were to do some shit like this, it is true two on two. Now I'm going to take the back out this way. Sorry, I'm going fast, but we've been going for a while. You can always go back and watch this um, on replay. I tag. It usually takes me a while because after this, I like to decompress. But I put in the chapters so you can watch it. Okay, you can see it. Boom, there's the hole. Quick slant. Now again, whose fault is this? Is this Dak Prescott? I mean, he's got an unblocked def defender running full speed at him. He makes the perfect read. Bam. Okay. I mean, I, I, it's hard to see where the ball is thrown. But this is what makes drove me crazy saying, oh, Dak Prescott was terrible. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Where is he supposed to hit it? You're supposed to lead him, I guess? I, I mean, I, at some point, like, you got to... This guy has a lot... Listen... I don't, you know, the running joke is I hate quarterbacks and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's funny. Ha, ha, ha. But, like, this is the hardest position to play in all sports, in my opinion. I mean, you recognize the pressure. You see the co you see the co uh, coverage rotation. You make the perfect read. Bam. I mean, come on, man. Jesus. Get your life together. Okay. Here's punch fire zone. I don't understand this concept offensively. Again, a lot of, cur I get it. Maybe they're a sticks throwing team. But most of their coverage is they're not a spot dropping team. So if you're going to throw something like this, you got to throw it now. Okay. I don't mean to play armchair quarterback. It's third and seven. You're throwing a curl against a man team. First of all, run a slant. You have a lot of space in here. Snap a slant. You got the back coming across. So if this guy's in man coverage right here, you're going to pull him and open up a window. They haven't been dropping their DNs out. They haven't been running any simulated pressures. There's your window. I don't understand this. Let's all sit down. And there's no outlet or anything. 
So now, okay, they brought, they picked up the edge blitz perfectly. Now he's got to make a play and go on the run. And there's nobody moving. It's scramble drill. Nobody's, I mean, what what's Dak supposed to throw to? There's nobody open. I don't get it. I don't get how you can come away from this game and be like, oh, Dak Prescott had a terrible game. I mean, where's he going to go? What's, I mean, now he looks backside. No, let's watch his eyes. He's checking over here, but w nobody's open. What are you supposed to do? Now, the only problem with bringing the... So so here's the problem. Pa let's talk pass pro for half a, uh, half a minute. Okay, he's coming back across. So the only problem with that is you gain this guy in these throwing lanes. Now, again, you could hit that backside, but he's looking over here first by bringing him across, which I get what they're trying to do. Uh, but you'd rather the back on the nickel than the slide this way and put the back on the end. But that is great job picking up the blitz. But now you're in those lanes. Problem. All right. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to go to cover nine. All right. So we talked about fire zone and what that means. Okay. So now let's go back to cover three and how that affects it. So again, I know I've been doing this a lot, but let's take this guy out of the picture. And he's down here. Now, what they do when they teach their cover nine is they say, okay. You are going to play seam flat fire zone technique. You are going to play seam flat fire zone technique. Okay. So, so far, so good. Okay. And this is where I think this, if you're a fire zone team, I think this is a fantastic idea. And again, it's what do you want to do? Do you want to be a fire zone team? Be a fire zone team. That's fine. But if that's not what you do, like I'm not a fire zone guy. I don't like three deep three under especially in the RPO world of today. But that's my personal opinion. But if you are a fire zone guy, or that's where you come from, then, you know, there's some there's some real merit to this stuff. Okay. Okay, hold on one sec. I had something, I had something here I wanted to, to go over real quick. So, all right. So, also, the run fits if it's two by two. This is an aside. If it's two by two, they're going to fit it like one lurk, which is one rat. Actually, I won't get into that because we didn't talk about robber. So one robber. So it's kind of a dumbass thing to do. So when they're in two by two, and I know I'm going to draw this. I'm going to no, actually no three by one is perfect. Now they run the advanced version of cover nine that uh, that we're going to see that usually is your building piece, but they didn't run the original version because these this doesn't uh this guy's not a real big vertical threat or they feel like this matchup was good right here or either he didn't release a lot or they felt the matchup was good so they replace it so here's how you now fit uh the fire zone stuff or how, how you add it to cover three out of three by one's easy okay you're still playing fire zone you're playing fire zone you're coming down you're playing fire zone rules okay now he's on the back basically he's got the back out if he goes in he pushes it inside okay now normally when i gave this analogy earlier we added our imaginary guy here we took this guy out of the equation and we blitzed this guy because he was away from the back now let's do that let's say this guy doesn't exist or actually no 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 let's bring him in let's blitz him and then we'll see how we'd fit that up well first of all the so if you were going to do that, he would have to drop off a three. He'd be inside out on three. I have to be inside out on two. I'm seam flat, but I got to be inside. If I'm outside and they run this, there's a huge asshole and I have to undercut it. Um, but you, you can get away with maybe being outside. You cannot get away with being outside here. Okay. Because as soon as they flare the back, I'm out of the picture. I'm gone. I jump outside. I mean, there's a lot of holes. So what they would say is you are seam flat, seam flat, hook three or whatever you want to call it. Okay. What they call, I'm trying to remember what they called their fire zone middle guy. Um, three receiver hook. And now bonus hook. You're not going anymore. Okay. What this does and I talk about this in the whip fire zone video. 
The best way to be fire zone is getting three by one and throw outs. Now this guy overdrops three. He can stay inside of three. And now you can drive the shit out of this. And because you have this extra dropper, now I can play heavy outside of two. And now all the stuff is solved. Okay. Now, I talked about this a couple weeks ago about Tennessee. Fangio was the guy that did this. So I can't go without explaining this. This might be one of the most revolutionary parts of what he's brought football. Okay. If this guy's McCaffrey, okay, you're going to play regular three week, what they call cover nine. I'm going to come down. I'm going to be your four to four first cross player. Uh, so I'm basically going to take the back out or as Fangio would call it seam flat. I'm going to take the back. I'm going to be the weak hook. So in weak hook, I have three up as three, which in fire zone, you'd have to have anyway. Bonus dropper would overdrop three, playing three out, looking for two coming back inside. This guy's your seam flat player. He's going to hold two in the seam. He'll play out to the flat if he goes out. But there, when I say seam flat, I don't mean I'm dropping the seam and I'm going out. You're basically playing on two. Unless he goes inside, then you match carry deliver. So that is regular cover nine. Okay. If they call... And I don't remember the exact call. But if they call, oh boy, what was it called? I, I don't remember. If they if they call a different version, I think it's nine. Bama call, well, I'll, I'll give you the, the read version. That's, that's the impressive part. There's a call, I don't remember the name of it, where now if this guy sucks, either he sucks, they don't release him, He's not a factor, whatever. They're going to say, listen, the hardest thing in cover three is to take the bender. So what we're going to do is we're going to poach it from deep. So we're going to play cover three over here with these guys. Now we're going to put this guy on the back and let him poach three like quarters. No, Gideon, play it. The most thing they'll do with fast four is they'll push this right here. But no, you never... If you're playing like gone like Aranda, because it's basically how it's played. In fact, I believe that's where Aranda got it from, where he got it from how Zimmer does it. Um, but you wouldn't push all three. You wouldn't play the fast stuff like Bama, or if he went like this, it would be a post-snap area check and all that. That's insane, and I would never do that. I would never advise doing that. Okay, so that's how they play 3D. I forget the name of it. Now, they have a concept called Key. This is the really cool part. And they also get the bonus from this by keeping this guy deep. Now, here's what happens. They read this. So if two blocks, or if, sorry, if two runs out, we play normal cover nine. I, I play seam flat. I play uh, three receiver hook. I'm the bonus hook. And that guy's pretty shallow and he gets wide. Okay, he's not running down the middle of the field or whatever. I'm playing more like a zone. And the strong hook defender, if they run a... Uh, X on a shallow, he would be responsible for it. Okay. Unless they made some sort of different call and that's how it plays. If the back blocks, now the backer takes him and now he poaches three. So in summary, badass who releases a lot. And most of the time they're going to read it. But if you're at a lower level and you're unsure about that and you just want to play it one way, or you don't have a lot of time. Badass, play regular 3D. Especially if this guy... The other thing is, does this guy suck? Or does he never go vertical? If 3 never goes vertical, then just play regular 3D. You don't need to poach number 3. If, if 3 is not running benders, don't poach him. So it's not only always about the back, but it's what 3 does. Okay? 3 sucks, doesn't go vertical. Back is good, always runs out, always runs flares, is a matchup problem, whatever. Play regular three week. Fangio calls it nine. The back always blocks or he's some fat ass that can't catch or he's always up here. And, and we've got, you know, when Fangio did it the Niners, that was Patrick Willis or Navarro Bowman. Okay, I got a beast. Which then at that point you could say, well, he can take three up. But you always want to, it's not even about the athlete. It's about the, the, the depth, having him take three up. Then we're going to put you on the back and you're going to poach and everything else is going to be cover three. And then if he's good and you're not sure, you key it. So if he's fast, it's regular cover nine. If he blocks, 
I take them and I go back. Fantastic idea. I've talked about this three or four times now. I'm probably going to make a video studying Fangio's 17 and 18 Bears and talk about it because they played it differently from one year to the next because of, I believe, it was because how Eddie Jackson progressed. But you can see here, here's Verts. Free safety takes three up, X on the dig. So this is what I don't like about how Fangio plays it. Okay, let's look at the scoreboard. Okay. I said, let's look at the scoreboard. Come on. Be good to me, huddle. So here's what's interesting. There were 63 snaps in the game. Okay. So if there's 63 snaps, 37 would be a little over half of the snaps. It's 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. So they, they played the first half the first half of their snaps until 11 minutes in the fourth quarter, and then the last half of their snap is just the last, the end of the game. So I get it. It's 27-0, nothing deep, nothing cheap. But normally, okay, normally the corner would play man-to-man -man here, press man, or he'd play tighter, and he would drive these digs. But because they're up by 27 with a minute left, all right, we'll we'll, drive, we'll, we'll rally up, we'll play this late. And I get it. I get there's a hole. But again, but you can see the bonus hook dropper right here. He's not getting too – sorry. Right there, he's not getting too wide. But you can see the backside safety poach. And the backer take the man to man. Okay, here's the weakness of it. Okay, is if three, now I know this is a bunch deal. But if three, if they get out too fast and he kind of delays and then sits down, remember he's playing from deep. So there's your weakness. Again, he catches it. He gets a first down, whatever. However, context. There's two minutes left in the game. Okay. There's two minutes left in the game and it's 30 to 8. So yeah, that's a weakness. But if I want to be fair, if you're watching this shit and you're like, well, yeah, but look at all the completions Dak had. Well, there you go. I mean, they're playing soft as shit and it's scrubbing time and whatever. Okay. Okay, we'll have a cup, couple quick hits, and I got three plays left. I got five plays left, and then I'll bid you adieu. I know this has been a long one, but there was a lot of great stuff in this game. And this is the year 2020. It's on demand. You can fast forward, come back, do whatever. Hell, if you watch on your phone and you're in the bathroom and you come back to your computer, it'll pick up where you left off. So I don't feel bad about going long, and neither should you. All right, cover two. Here's the seam bust. So this is straight now. It looks like two to me with how the safeties are out. I don't know. Maybe it's quarter, quarter, half versus empty. This could be basically what people would call like a, a version of like a stress call where, okay, we're going to play halves over here and we're going to, I think it's quarter, quarter, half. I think it's cover six or what I said was called stuff um, where I'm going to gain some depth and I'm going to play with the top of two and three. I'm going to sink out and play any verticals. It's empty. So you don't expect a bunch of really deep routes, but here's what can happen. Here's the seam bust. Three is too wide. Remember we talked about playing that hook. You had to play that hook in there more. There's a there's a hole in here. And then you can see out here, same thing to the boundary. Okay. If you're, if you're playing a wall technique here. Okay. If you're playing a wall technique, you have to play this one of two ways. You have to have the corner funnel one inside. Him VH2, and then if one is inside, I fall off, and then the corner works to the next guy. Or, and that's what we did in TC World, it's called five wall. But if we wanted, if teams were running uh, two by two drive, and you were getting a lot of this, we would make a keep call, which means you would keep your wall. So if you got this or something like this, the corner would stay on the drive, the overhang would stay on the dig so he could nail down. And now you're getting three over two because if you run a lot of drive, which the Cowboys do, and remember, two's on the ball, so you're expecting something like that. If you play it like normal, two rules, he's got to come off. He's playing here. There's no way he's going to undercut the dig from out here, and he's got to nail down on that. So really, you're playing two on two instead of three on two. Not a great vibe for what you're looking for. But because of how they're playing, this guy's got to buy him back inside. Somebody's messed up here again. Oh, Dak Prescott. Oh, it's Dak's fault. I think this is this gets knocked down, or I don't know what happens. 
I hate to belabor this point. I am not a Dak apologist. I'm not a Cowboys fan. I just call it like I see it. I mean, he looks front side. The dude's open. I think he might get a hand on the ball. But, I mean, this is what I was talking about early on. So you've designed a play to beat a coverage, and the guy getting the ball is your backup running back, who may be a great receiver. But here's the thing. Here's the secret of football, okay? For those of you who are like, wow, this shit seems... Okay, now we're getting into the night. We're getting so late in the night. Huddle's not letting me erase shit. Okay, let's get into the secret of football. Football is an easy game made complicated by people like yours truly, Okay. Here's the deal. When you're designing plays, you want to get somebody open. Okay? And it could be it could be multiple guys, depending on what the coverage is. Some plays are designed to get certain people open. Same thing on defense. When you're sitting up the ball, you're designing a defense to fit up versus a certain person. You're funneling the ball to somebody. So on defense, you want to funnel the ball to your best player. On offense, you want to get the ball to your best guy. If this is the concept and you think they're playing quarter, quarter, half, which... These are both great routes to beat both sides of the coverage. So you got the perfect call on. And the play is that speed to design is the throw to your back of running back. I don't know what to tell you. That's on Kellen Moore. I don't know. Maybe or it's on Tony Pollard. I don't know. But it's not on it's not on four. All right. Here's just a snap of undercover four. Third and one. Tight coverage. This is again, this is tight coverage. This is earlier in the game. So it's the end of the first quarter. It's 6-0. Um, I think it's supposed to be quarter, quarter, half. Because they don't play a lot of straight. Well, no, they do. They play tight four. I'm sorry. They ran under. They lose, So they lose contain. No, no. They keep contain, rather. Sorry. Okay. They're, they're, they gum everything up. They got coverage here. Now, I mean, look at this. Watch Sertan. He makes... Now, he stops his feet and lunges, which is not great. But he recovers. And what he does, what's great is... If he was to chase flat, he beats him. So he realizes, oh shit, I lunged. I'm going to go meet him out here because if I if I chase... And this is, guys, if you got any DB coaches in here, God, come on, Huddle. Don't fail me now, buddy. Okay? If you got some young dudes out here, this is the biggest mistake corners do when they're playing press. One of, they reach, they lunge, and then the guy beats him right here. And then they're like, oh shit, and they try to recover and go flat, and then he gets you by. Sertan meets him to cut off. Lamb tries to push off of him. Sertan's right there. The DN does a great job. So Dak's on the run. Now, this is this is a little high, but still, I mean, Sertan's right on him. That's got to be a perfectly thrown ball to be caught. I'm sorry, that's not CD. That's not Lamb. I apologize. Got guys with almost identical looking numbers with almost identical hairdos. It's, it's it's tough out here in the streets to figure this shit out. But I mean, that I, there there's not guys wide open, and this is what drives me insane when people say, "Now this is the Denver Broncos." Okay, so Broncos fans in here, no offense to you, but everybody wants to fire your coach. Okay, everybody's talking about well, not everybody, but a lot of people are talking about wanting to fire your coach. This is supposed to be an an average to blow average football team. Okay. Now, they got a great secondary. Okay, come on, Huddle, please. You know, you've been so good to me. Okay. And the Cowboys are supposed to have all this talent. Not saying they don't. I'm not trying to be, you know, ironic here, whatever. It's 13 personnel, so there's three tight ends in the game. So, you're supposed to have all this talent. And they're staying stride for stride with your guys. Now, I know Sertan's fantastic. And I, I, this receiver is not even one of their top two or three guys. Maybe he's their third guy. I don't know. Okay. Don't tell me you can't play close coverage in the NFL. The Cowboys had a top three offense. I know the Denver's really good on defense, but like so many people just acquiesce and just give up ass because, oh, we can't do that. We can't do that. And and congrats to, to Fangio for sitting on this and saying, no, I'm not. We're doing what we want to do. And that's where stubbornness can pay off. All right. Here's a call from directly from the Vic Fangio playbook. It is called Dodgers. So for them, Tampa 2 is Brooklyn. Dodgers is the drop eight version. All they're going to do out of four down is they're going to play Tampa 2, and the boundary end is going to drop to be a bonus. I keep drawing, and i got to realize it's not going to erase now. So it's empty. It looks like the middle's open. This is fantastic. Okay. They try to run the crosser. Now, normally, if you have cover two, this would screw you up. This crosser coming back uh, across. <laughs> Uh, would screw you up and there'd be a bunch of space. But because there's this bonus dropper, he's able to take this. It's 
uh, Elliot. Uh, I think that's that's I think that's uh, Zeke, isn't it? Is running a crossing route against a linebacker, he's able to take it. But if Vic just drops seven, that's a problem. Now this hook defender is going to have to come off, and there's some space. But this guy's able to match it. He's able to drive it. Pass breakup. That's just a great call. And you never see that coming. They play double threes. This is what's fantastic out of it. I mean, but then again, you're throwing a crosser to your running back. against a team that plays quarters and shit. I, that's what I don't understand, man. That's the part I don't understand. And I'm not getting from this game. What are your thoughts on jam technique? Always one hand, two for the right situation. We never taught two. Um, because in high school, I couldn't get guys to be responsible enough slash we didn't have enough time where if we told somebody to go with two, they always tried to go with two and they tried to not get the knockout punch. Um, not my favorite. So we, we did opposite hand. Uh, we didn't mirror off the bat, but if they stepped, we would step back and punch. We were trying to play with our feet. If we had a long arm guy, we might change it up some of the stuff, but most of my long lean guys weren't playing corner. They were playing safety or D end or whatever because of the defense we ran. So we had, we played, we usually were shorter guys, not exceptionally long arms. So we played feet first. All right, here is, they call this one special. So you're basically, whenever you're playing cover one, uh, opposite hand, um, you'd want to stay a square. Jordan is asking one hand to open up to hip to the boundary. You want to go opposite hand, to open up your hips, but you want to stay a square for as long as possible. Um, now 85 on that one play on the sideline he took a wide ass release so it wasn't like one of these things um where he could step out and in. yeah but you use the boundary as help but if you're playing cover one your rats over the ball your receivers out in the numbers he beats you inside and catches that slant and can go for a long ass way so you're always wanting to play your leverage your help yeah your bound your, your helps outside but if you open the gate or you jump, you know, like you're saying, stay inside, punch with your opposite hand. They can turn you if you if you're too aggressive because you want to step then punch. Press coverage is about eyes, feet, then hands. You want to get your eyes in the right place. You want to move your feet, then punch. Your arms. I always told our kids your arms were bonus. You were not trying to go with your hands and lunge or lean on people. Uh, I always told our kids it's like watching Ali box. He would back up and he would he would snap you with a jab, and he was doing some real big damage. But he wasn't stepping in anything where if somebody slipped him, he'd fall over or get counterpunched. So we want to stay as square as long as possible. All right, here we go. We got what we call one special. We're bringing five-man pressure with a cover one with a guy in the middle of the field because it's in the goal line or the low red zone. This guy is going to rat at the goal line. He's looking towards the bunch. So down here, we're covered up. We got guys, we got guys covering man-to-man. The backside safety is looking front side. They do a good job of matching the guy coming across. Nowhere to go with the ball. Incomplete. Watch that one more time. Here's the thing. Here's the key. Uh, you want to... Um, yeah, Jordan. I mean, I did this for 15 years. Believe me, this is not shit I'm talking off the top of my head. Like, I mean, we. I had to think of this for long and hard. I mean, I coached corners... I coach corners every year that I coach football, except for one year at Clovis, I coach safeties. In 2018, I coached safeties, which I hated. I love coaching corners so much better, even though safeties are the key to the defense. You want to be a coordinator and you want to run the 4-2-5? Get you a safeties coach that can do a little bit of everything, and your life is so much better. I hated being the safeties coach. It was hard for me to be the safeties coach and the coordinator. It's like being the O-line coach and the coordinator. you got to spend so much time. Maybe that's a bad analogy, but... You got to spend so much time at the O-line, it's hard to watch everything. And with the corners, you can I would pawn off the corners with the safeties coach all the time. And for five, ten minutes, they may be the freaking scout receivers. And they'd service the safeties, and then i go with the linebackers and stuff. But with safeties, there was too much stuff going on. Anyway, um, but thank you, Jordan. So they're playing. They're, they're playing combo, what, what I would call um, traffic which is what you want to do out of five man. So you're locking two, you're banjoing one in three with these two cats. Now you have an extra guy. So you can tell this guy right here, Hey, listen, you have help backside. Uh, Cause he's not watching the quarterback size. Cause you can see Dak is looking over here right now. He is pushing front side. So listen, maybe by, maybe by rule, 
the Cowboys were doing stuff where they were sent now because he jumps inside pretty quickly. I was gonna say maybe they were trying to get three on a corner, so they were trying to vice number three with the two safeties uh, and leave you know the corner on uh, coming out the guy coming out. But you can see it right here. Corner takes three outside. The safety looks to one backside guy is gonna help double him. He's outside shoulder, inside shoulder. It's tight. You can't see from that angle really. Here's the end zone. Yeah, Dak on the run. I mean, nobody's open. I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's a thing that just it boggles my mind. All right, so I think this is actually a touchdown. Uh, but you can see it. They motion over now for this play, and I don't know what the read is or why. Maybe it was because it was bunch. What it could have been last time, because usually given this rat rules, they might say, hey, listen, and this is where tendencies come into play, game plans come into play. Hey, listen, when they're in bunch, they're going to throw, they're going to bring a guy from the bunch coming back. They're going to do something. They're going to throw, bring a guy over here. They're going to throw the bunch side. They're not going to one-on-one -on -one much. But hey, listen, if, if they put trips to the right and a certain guy over here, then we're going to double back over here. I mean, this is like the end of the game. I think there's like seconds left. But Kareem this time, Kareem the Dream, He's looking to help backside over here. So I don't know exactly what was in the key. Now they're playing straight zero. So this is kind of a problem because he's playing outside. He's got no help inside. He's open. Touchdown. Or uh, Is this a touchdown or two-point conversion? I think this is the touchdown before the two-point conversion. Yeah, this is the touchdown. So there you go. All right. Thank you, guys. I forgot to do that. I have this whole soundboard. Thank you, guys. I know we almost went three hours. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Learned a lot myself. Thank you. I know he's not here anymore. Thank you to Cody Rourke. I feel so bad. I, I asked these guys to come on for two hours. And I'm like, actually, I'm going uh, to make you come on for three hours. But uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking around. I had a lot of fun uh, doing this stuff. I'm going to do another one tomorrow night on the Jaguars defense. Uh, I'm going to try to get some inside scoop. I know a few guys in the building. So I'm uh, going to try and bug him and see if he'll um, um, give me some scoop there. But I don't know. Anyway, as always, thank you guys. Thank you to the GF for the Latte Larry's House. Shout out to Kirby Enthusiasm fans everywhere. And don't forget, the quarterback can't see with tears in their eyes. See you tomorrow night.